Mas Mandus. Hai. <laughs> Wes ya, aku sudah. Mandus. Mandus. Sip. Ini ada Pak Arif. Matiin lu. Hidup lu. itu kan wong oh, udah Novia nih oh, ini ya ah kalau mesti kasih nama gimana itu nah itu
Kerungu iki. Ringgi. Terus, tempoh hari gimana tuh? Suaranya bisa? Belum, belum, belum ya. Ini cuma sering gambar. Berarti kalau ibu supaya bisa dengar suara itu apa nggak? Ini sebut. Tadi apa katanya? Press. masa-masa ini kita dapat membuktikan bahwa kita adalah bagian dari
Selamat sore semua hadir. Selamat sore kawan-kawan. Sopoiki. Mangal me medan. Pajarin om pak, banget, pajarin om.
Halo, salam. Halo. Aduh, mana ada suara. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Ya. Kita bisa mulai ya, langsung bisa mulai ya. Ya. Baik, terima kasih Bapak Ibu sekalian telah hadir di acara kita pada hmm, sore hari ini. Sungguh uh, luar biasa pada hari ini kita bisa berkumpul bersama uh, puji syukur di uh, acara webinar kita yang kedua, di sesi yang kedua. Kemudian um, tak lupa juga di bulan suci Ramadan ini kita juga memanjatkan puji syukur kehadirat Allah. Kemudian salawat serta salam kita panjatkan atau curahkan kepada Nabi Muhammad SAW. Uh, yang tentunya pada siang hari ini kita berkesempatan uh, men mengundang empat pembicara kita pada sore hari ini yang nantinya akan berdiskusi bersama kita pada sore hari ini. Kemudian nanti uh, saya akan memperkenalkan mereka semua di hadapan Anda semua, para partisipan semua, uh, dan kemudian kita akan dipandu oleh moderator kita. Dan namun sebelumnya nanti kita akan menjelaskan tata tertib peserta webinar IAP Jatim kali ini. Yang pertama adalah um, kami akan menyampaikan kesimpulan uh, dari webinar satu, 
mengapa mengapa kami sampaikan kesimpulan dari webinar satu karena berdasarkan hasil rekapitulasi uh, jumlah peserta yang hadir pada sore hari ini itu menunjukkan bahwa 60 persen peserta dari 326 alhamdulillah kita sekarang berkumpul di um, 326 peserta di, di mana uh, 60 persennya adalah uh, peserta yang belum uh, mengikuti hasil dari uh, atau diskusi pada webinar sebelumnya yaitu webinar pertama. Nah di sini kemudian uh, kami akan sampaikan uh, kesimpulan dari hasil webinar yang pertama yaitu adalah kalau boleh saya sampaikan kesimpulannya lagi bahwa yang pertama dari Bapak Ravandoli menyampaikan dari sejarawan kita yang berada di Melbourne, Australia. Di sana beliau menyampaikan bahwa aspek spasial yang paling berper, berperan dalam penyebaran uh, flu Spanyol pada saat itu dari tahun 1918 adalah uh, pelabuhan atau sebagai uh, penularan utama dari penyebaran uh, flu Spanyol. Kemudian kota paling sever terhadap uh, perkembangan pandemi pada saat itu yaitu banyak uh, penduduk pada saat itu mel uh, melarikan diri ke desa yang dianggap lebih aman untuk uh, penyebaran uh, flu Spanyol pada saat itu. Kemudian di situ di hasil diskusi itu juga ada uh, menunjukkan ada kaitan uh, kepadatan populasi karena uh, pertama kali diserang adalah uh, fasilitas penjara yang mengingatkan dulu uh, yang yang mungkin pada saat uh, saat itu populasi tidak sepadat seperti saat ini. Kemudian ada juga menunjukkan karantina wilayah atau pembatasan pembatasan dalam skala besar, terutama pada pintu-pintu masuk uh, di suatu wilayah, terutama yang ada di Hindia uh, di uh, kawasan Hindia Belanda, yaitu melalui uh, pelabuhan. Kemudian kekurangan fasilitas dan tidak kesiapan pemerintah pada saat itu, baik dalam skala lokal maupun skala uh, yang lebih besar lagi itu uh, kesiapan menghadapi pandemi mengibat, mengakibatkan banyaknya korban yang meninggal. Kemudian dari Ibu Farida, uh, saya, uh, saya bisa menarik kesimpulan bahwa urban safer the pandemic Jew adalah aksesibilitas dan number uh, dari jumlah populasi yang ada. Kemudian konektivitas di area yang terinfeksi menjadi katalis utama dalam cepat dan tidaknya uh, penyebaran tersebut terjadi. Kemudian adanya kepadatan bangunan dan kepadatan jumlah penduduk diperhitungkan sebagai katalis dari penyebaran tersebut. Kemudian di situ juga ada poin tentang karakter sosial masyarakat, baik itu masyarakat dari tingkat menengah hingga ke atas, yang ditandai dengan indikator persentase populasi bepergian, ada interaksi bepergian dari satu wilayah ke wilayah yang lain. Kemudian di sini adalah karakter kesehatan masyarakat di ruang-ruang tertentu, Uh, ditunjukkan adanya uh, uh, menunjukkan kelemahan sehingga terjadi uh, 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 perilaku pola, uh, pola hidup sehat yang dianggap masih cukup rendah di kalangan masyarakat kita sehingga di sini isolasi ruang dan karantina wilayah uh, termasuk perlambatan konektivitas uh, di, di beberapa wilayah atau kawasannya kemudian di sini juga adanya home isolation dalam baik itu dalam skala uh, rumah tangga dan kemudian ada lockdown dan shutdown uh, inilah uh, hasil dari um, kesimpulan kita di webinar pertama mudah-mudahan ini setidaknya bisa memberikan uh, sesuatu yang bisa mengkonektivitas eh, mengkoneksikan kita dengan webinar yang kedua kemudian kalau kita bisa lihat di sini bahwa di diagram berikutnya uh, dari jumlah peserta yang hadir pada sore hari ini alhamdulillah bahwa Sebagian besar adalah 41 persen, 41,7 persen adalah spasial planner. Jadi memang uh, sebagian besar sudah sesuai dengan apa yang kita harapkan. Kemudian peringkat berikutnya adalah mahasiswa, student. Di sini mereka menduduki sekitar 30 persen. Kemudian uh, berikutnya adalah uh, uh, berprofesi adalah pegawai negeri atau pegawai pemerintah sekitar, sekitar 4 persen. Kemudian di Berikutnya adalah individual consultant. Jadi ada beberapa, ada lima kategori yang uh, kita temui dari hasil kita mengkategorisasi dari uh, atau merekapitulasi data yang uh, dari 326 peserta. Alhamdulillah pada sore hari ini. Kemudian uh, 
Berikutnya adalah saya ingin memperkenalkan kepada Anda semua uh, para pembicara kita di sini. Um, adalah empat orang pemuda yang kita pilih memang untuk bisa memberikan uh, setidaknya beberapa informasi yang kita butuhkan. Karena memang undangan kita dari webinar 1 hingga nanti webinar 3 itu adalah personal-personal uh, yang um, agak mungkin tidak berada pada satu bidang dengan kita. Sehingga harapan kami dengan informasi yang kita dapatkan dari beliau-beliau ini bisa kita serap dengan baik dan kemudian kita akan uh, gunakan untuk kita bisa merefleksi diri, membuat kita menjadi mengevaluasi sebagai seorang perencana poin-poin mana yang perlu dari hasil pandangan kita, dari curahan sudut pandang yang berbeda dengan uh, ilmu kita. Di sini saya akan memperkenalkan kepada Anda semua uh, pembicara kita, uh, empat orang. Yang pertama adalah uh, Ishani, she is from India. Halo Ishani, how are you today? Hello. Hello. You all here, very good afternoon. Uh, yeah, okay. My name is Vanita Chahini Ari. I am host okay. in here. Okay. Nice. I, okay. Nice. Are you ready? Yeah. Nice to meet you too. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Definitely, I'm ready. There you go. Okay. Stay tuned with me. Okay. Uh, the second, I want to introduce all of you participant. He is a Ali, Sumran Ali. How are you, Sumran Ali? Sumran Ali. Halo. Bapak Ali akan bergabung nanti, Ibu. Oke, okay, baiklah. Saya lanjutkan berikutnya adalah Nizar. How are you, Nizar? Halo, Nizar? Oke. Okay. Mungkin dia masih ini ya menunggu untuk kita bisa bersam uh, apa, bersambung dengan dia. Kemudian yang jelas, Dimas. Dimas, halo. Oke, okay. kita. Iya, uh, yeah, iya, yeah, aman. Halo. Oleh, halo. How are you today? Ya, yeah, alhamdulillah sehat. Sehat. Oke, okay. dia adalah orang Indonesia rupanya. <laughs> Oke, okay, selamat uh, ber, ber uh, apa ya ber, ini ya berdiskusi dengan kita. Yeah. Diskusinya nggak nggak usah yang berat-berat ini kayaknya ya. Jadi saya oke. Okay. Berikutnya, I want to uh, introduce uh, all of you in, in Bahasa. Because it's 100% uh, participant in here, uh, Indonesian participant. Jadi saya akan memperkenalkan, next I want to introduce you in Bahasa. Oke, okay, yang pertama ada Ishani. Iya. Yeah. Ishani, she is a young lady from India. Dia adalah um, seorang yang... Uh, menerima penghargaan cukup banyak saya lihat di sini ya penghargaan dari beberapa kegiatan-kegiatan yang uh, hubungan dengan kegiatan sosial kemudian dia juga menulis di beberapa referens referensi baik itu skala uh, nasional maupun internasional kemudian um, dia juga adalah seorang research and analysis di sini kemudian dia juga memiliki kemampuan yang cukup baik dalam berkomunikasi strong communication terus kemudian pengalamannya cukup banyak jadi nanti kita akan mendengarkan dia untuk bisa berbagi cerita di uh, Patna India jadi sebuah kota yang ada di India kemudian itu tadi dari Isnain Ishani uh, kemudian yang berikutnya adalah uh, Sumran Ali nah Sumran Ali ini adalah Uh, seorang Pakistan yang belajar di Hefei, China, sebuah kota yang tidak jauh dari Wuhan. Nanti di sana dia akan bercerita bagaimana penyebaran uh, terutama di Wuhan dan di daerah seputar tempat tinggalnya. Uh, Ali ini adalah seorang tenaga uh, pengajar asisten pengajar juga. Uh, dia uh, asisten pengajar di Institut Teknologi Bisnis dan Informatika yang ada di Lahore, Pakistan. Kemudian dia juga masuk dalam Dewan Teknologi Informasi yang berada di Punjab, pemerintahan Punjab yang ada di Lahore, Pakistan. Di sini dia juga memiliki kemampuan berbahasa cukup baik, yaitu bahasa Inggrisnya cukup baik, kemudian Arabiknya excellent, dan kemudian Hindinya juga cukup baik. Jadi nanti 
teman-teman yang bisa berkomunikasi dengan Arabik maupun Hindi bisa berkomunikasi atau bertanya langsung di kepada um, si uh, kepada Ali. Kemudian yang berikutnya adalah uh, Nizar Nizar Ihromi Hidayat. Uh, beliau ini adalah uh, lulusan dari Institut Teknologi 10 November Surabaya yang sampai saat ini bekerja di Ericsson di Saudi Arabia. Nanti uh, Nizar akan juga berbagi cerita kepada kita dan belajar bersama uh, tentang keadaan dan kondisinya di Saudi Arabia, di Riyadh ya. Kemudian yang terakhir, kayaknya uh, Mas Dimas ini yang terakhir kayaknya. Uh, Mas Dimas ini adalah kalau teman-teman di Jawa Timur, khususnya di Kota Malang, tidak akan pernah uh, apa ya, maksudnya uh, cukup mengenal sosok ini. Beliau adalah Uh, seorang tenaga pengajar di universitas di jurusan perencanaan wilayah kota di Universitas Brawijaya Malang. Kemudian beliau uh, uh, adalah sekarang adalah tena, uh, asisten pengajar di Department of Urban Planning di The University of Manchester. Jadi beliau sekarang ada di Manchester uh, University di UK. Ke, kalau dari uh, pendidikannya sih uh, S1-nya adalah di Brawijaya. Universitas Brawijaya PWK, kemudian masternya ada di satu di ITB, di City and Regional Planning ITB, kemudian yang berikutnya adalah masternya di Environmental Management atau Sustainable Development di, uh, di University of Queensland, Australia, dan yang terakhir adalah sedang uh, PhD kandidat di Urban Planning di University of, Man of Manchester. Nah, itulah tadi empat pembicara kita pada sore hari ini, tentunya pembicara yang luar biasa, Uh, yang uh, bisa nanti kita bisa dengarkan dari kacamata mereka semua. Kemudian saya berikutnya akan memperkenalkan kepada Anda semua yang ada di sini adalah reviewer kita. Uh, reviewer ini sangat penting, beliau-beliau ini ada di, uh, dalam dewan anggota dewan pakar kita di uh, Ikatan Al uh, Ahli Perencanaan Jawa Timur. Seperti webinar pertama Bapak Dr. Ibnu Sasongko, kali ini kita akan memperkenalkan kepada Anda semua reviewer kita yaitu Bapak Putu, uh, Bapak Insinyur Putu Rudi Setiawan MSC. Beliau sudah sangat terkenal sekali dan kita, kalau untuk kami uh, mungkin um, apa ya cukup mengenal beliau karena beliau adalah salah satu penggagas dari uh, Ikatan Ahli Perencana yang ada di Jawa Timur beserta yang lainnya. Di Dewan Pakar ini juga nanti ada Bapak Agus Dwi Bicaksono juga nanti mungkin insya Allah bergabung dengan kita. Nah Bapak Putu Rudi Setiawan ini saya perkenalkan beliau adalah dosen jurusan Uh, arsitek hingga uh, sekarang adalah dosen uh, PWK yang ada di ITS hingga sekarang. Kemudian beliau memiliki pengalaman berorganisasi dari mulai menjadi uh, bagian dari Ikatan Ahli Perencanaan Indonesia yang ada di Jawa Timur. Kemudian beliau juga Dewan Riset Provinsi Jawa Timur. Kemudian masuk dalam Ahli Komisi Penilai Amdal di Provinsi Jawa Timur. Kemudian sampai detik ini beliau adalah asesor teknik tata lingkungan LPJKP Jawa Timur dari tahun 2014 hingga sekarang. Kemudian pengalaman profesionalnya sudah tidak dilakukan lagi, beliau adalah menjadi uh, tim dalam penyusunan beberapa dokumen-dokumen perencanaan baik yang ada di Jawa Timur maupun yang ada di Indonesia. Berikutnya adalah saya akan memperkenalkan kepada Anda semua moderator kita yang akan membimbing kita di dalam diskusi ini, dia adalah Muhammad Reza. Uh, beliau adalah salah satu staf pengajar di uh, Institut Teknologi Nasional Malang. Nah, demikianlah tadi adalah pribadi-pribadi uh, yang akan membimbi, apa, uh, memandu acara ini. Yang kemudian nanti kita akan, um, sebelum kita mulai, saya akan membacakan dulu tata tertib dari um, tata tertib dari uh, kegiatan kita pada sore hari ini. Yaitu yang pertama saya bacakan satu link zoom akan dibuka satu jam sebelum acara sudah kita lakukan kemudian yang kedua peserta diharuskan memakai nama aslinya atau nama bukan nama yang lainnya untuk kepentingan dalam pembuatan sertifikasi atau e sertifikat kemudian yang ketiga adalah peserta wajib menyalakan video 15 menit di, di awal dan 15 menit di akhir untuk keperluan absensi dan dokumentasi kita. Kemudian ruang chat hanya dibuka pada masa registrasi dan 15 menit sebelum acara berakhir. Kemudian webinar akan disampaikan dalam bahasa Inggris. 
kemudian peserta dimohon untuk menahan pertanyaan yang dipunyainya dan nanti akan ada sesi tanya jawab yang akan dipandu oleh, oleh moderator setelah narasumber selesai paparan. Kemudian pertanyaan akan diajukan dapat diajukan dalam bahasa Indonesia maupun dalam bahasa Inggris. Jadi di sini nanti moderator dan co-host akan menerjemahkan beberapa pertanyaan dalam bahasa Indonesia ke dalam bahasa Inggris yang ditujukan kepada narasumber-narasumber yang memang berbahasa Inggris. Kemudian peserta dimohon untuk mematikan mikrofon pada saat narasumber sedang berbicara. Kemudian peserta dimohon untuk tidak menyelau ketika pembicaraan narasumber sedang berlangsung. Dan ada tiga cara untuk mengajukan pertanyaan. Yang pertama adalah secara direct, tapi sesi pertama nanti kita lakukan secara direct. Jadi Anda bisa bertanya langsung kepada pembicara, di mana di sini kami berharap bahwa penanya to the point, jadi langsung kepada poin pertanyaannya. Kemudian nanti yang sesi yang kedua bisa lewat ruang chat, nanti Anda lakukan. Anda bisa bertanya melalui ruang chat, kemudian nanti akan kita rekapitulasi dan kita akan sampaikan kepada moderator, moderator untuk disampaikan kepada pembicara. Kemudian yang terakhir adalah uh, yang terakhir ini adalah lewat chat di YouTube Live. Jadi pertanyaan juga sama seperti di ruang uh, ruang chat yang di Zoom, kita akan lakukan rekapitulasi dan akan kita teruskan kepada moderator. Kemudian yang yang terakhir adalah peserta diharapkan tidak mengajukan pertanyaan lebih dari tiga poin pertanyaan pada setiap kesempatan karena ini memberi kesempatan kepada peserta lain untuk bisa ber, bertanya uh, juga gitu. Yang terakhir adalah kita akan melakukan uh, wifi wif, wif, ya. Kemudian kita sebagai uh, apa namanya dokumentasi kita. Jadi mohon untuk 15 menit terakhir uh, Anda membuka uh, videonya untuk kita bisa foto bersama. Demikianlah uh, tata tertib yang bisa kami sampaikan pada sore hari ini. Uh, sebelum kita mulai, saya akan mempersilahkan kepada Bapak Ketua kita, Bapak Ketua kita, Bapak Adam Saadikara, untuk memberikan sepatah dua patah kata untuk membuka webinar kita pada sore hari ini. Kami persilahkan Bapak Adam. Oke, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, sebelumnya mungkin saya mau nyapa sedikit ke teman-teman speaker dan reviewer yang sudah hadir kali ini. I want to say thank you to Isani, Mr. Ali, juga mungkin ke Pak Dimas dan Mas Dizar yang sudah datang. I hope that what we discuss this afternoon can provide new information for all participant and is useful for handling COVID-19 outbreaks in our respective countries. Uh, selanjutnya mungkin ini merupakan bagian kedua ya dari apa yang akan kita bahas. Kalau dalam bagian pertama kita bicara tentang latar belakangnya, sejarahnya bagaimana proses-proses yang similar terjadi di masa lalu seperti Spanish flu, kemudian juga beberapa wabah lainnya yang disampaikan oleh para historian di bagian pertama. Nah, di bagian kedua ini kita mencoba untuk melihat, meninjau, mereview kira-kira bagaimana apa yang terjadi pada penanganan COVID-19 ini di Riyadh, di Manchester, kemudian juga di Patna, di India, dan juga di HV, di China. Nah, dari sini mungkin kita bisa melihat benang merahnya, nanti mungkin juga dirampung, eh, dirangkai oleh Pak Puturudi, mentor saya itu, bagaimana bisa merumuskannya dan dibahasakan dalam perspektif spasial. Dan mudah-mudahan ini bisa menjadi kesadaran bersama kita, menambah wacana kita, bisa memberikan ekspansi yang besar pada pengawatan kita bagaimana keterlibatan aspek uang dalam penanganan COVID-19. Mungkin begitu saja, not further ado, langsung saja pada uh, acara diskusi ini, web seminar ini, kami persilakan Mas Reza untuk men-take over monggo. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Bapak Adam, uh, uh, Bapak Adam Sadikara atas sepatah dua patah katanya. Memang benar bahwa nanti Bapak Putu Rudi Siketiawan akan menjadi the connecting dot dari berbagai uh, dis, uh, apa ya, masukan atau hasil diskusi kita pada sore hari ini. Kemudian saya ingin menyampaikan juga, ini karena masuk pada uh, waktu sholat asar, jadi uh, kepada Bapak Ibu, rekan-rekan uh, sekalian yang ingin menjalankan ibadah sholat asar, kami persilahkan untuk meninggalkan, tapi jangan mematikan roomnya, 
Jadi silakan Anda untuk menjala, uh, sholat uh, asar dan kemudian nanti bisa kembali lagi bergabung bersama kami. Untuk selanjutnya, uh, kami persilahkan kepada moderator, saya serahkan uh, sesi berikutnya kepada Anda untuk bisa memandu acara ini, untuk bisa mengatur arus lalu lintas informasi, dan good luck, mudah-mudahan kita bisa uh, menjalankan amanah dari uh, bidang ini. Terima kasih kami persilahkan Mas Reza. Thank you, Vanita. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to say thank you for for you joining in the Webinar Planners Association in East Java. It's great to see you all. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Reza. I'm the moderator of this discussion forum. This is an international edition of Web Seminar Part 2 that proudly present it to you by Planner Associate in East Java Province. Uh, our topic today is uh, lesson learned and sharing experiences, city special organization and policy on the COVID-19 implication and distribution. Uh, as you know, um, city special organization and policy on the COVID-19 implication and distribution, this special edition is saying through the local side uh, on the learning of the city size activities and structure impact impact on COVID-19 spread from high spread to low spread, and even the recover city. Furthermore, this session is also taking about how the government interfere the public space and also policies that apply within the city and the result of those policy on COVID-19 cases. Uh, as I has mentioned it before, we have uh, four person as the speakers, uh, Ishani from India, uh, Dimas from Manchester, and Nizar from uh, Riyadh, KSA, and Ali from uh, Pakistan, actually is living in now in a heavy China. So um, I'm not uh, talk too much. Uh, we have already uh, a speaker here. Now moving, uh, uh, moving along to our session, please welcome Ishani from India. Uh, you have uh, 15 minutes for your presentation. Uh, the time is yours. Please, Ishani. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Reza. And uh, thank you, Ms. Panita, for giving me such an introduction. So, yeah. So today, uh, I'll be talking about uh, Patna City. The lesson learned. Uh, before that, I want to congratulate AI, India, as Donation Association of Planner for its 49th anniversary and giving this platform to me to, you know, connect to the people throughout the world and, you know, somehow contribute to the COVID-19 because knowledge is something and awareness is something we have to be throughout so yeah so next slide please yeah so naming the coronavirus disease like we have to understand that the uh, the back plate. so we have to understand that the virus and the the covid disease is different from each other so there was a severe acute respiratory syndrome start which outbroke in uh, 2013 so and uh, that is how the name has come up with SARS-CoV-2 from it. And the COVID-19 is the disease. So this slide, the statistics of COVID-19 in India, this is from the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So on this website, our country, uh, the ministry, the union ministry keeps on updating all the relevant updates about the COVID-19, like related to active cases, how many cured, how many died, how many migrated, and they'll come up with a lot of posters also, in fact, in which, like, uh, they, there was one poster in which they came up with, in which they talked about people who have migrated and, uh, like, traveled from outside. So they would mention the specific cautions they have to take, like, for example, they would, like, use, uh, they have to seek, if, if they're traveling by air, airplane, right, so they have to, uh, seek masks to the cabin crew in the airline. If they are not feeling well, they are having symptoms of cough, fever, and anything else related to the symptom of COVID-19, they should immediately report to the uh, you know, authority at the, at the airport also. So this is about the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the larger context that India is dealing with at the union level. So, and then uh, the next slide, please. This is just to show the map of India uh, can we go to next slide? Uh, 
Am I audible? Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rizwa. Thank you so much. So then, this is the map of India. So ah, uh, the area which I'm talking about today is mainly in the eastern India, which is in the next slide, the eastern part of India, Bihar, and the capital city is Patna, as you can see in the next slide. Yeah, so that is the area I've demarcated. So Bihar is the state I'm talking about, and specifically Patna, which is the capital city of it. So talking about it, it is located on the southern bank. Just to give the review about the city, and then we'll come up with how the government has taken initiative in the state and the city to come to overcome this. So it is located on the southern bank of River Ganga, and it's surrounded by three rivers. And largest town and the largest town and headquarters of Patna district and Patna division and Bihar state and it is very well connected with the railways and the roads and it is a mainly administrative and educational center of Bihar which is the entire state so a lot of people from the nearby villages they come up in the Patna city to for their educational even uh, we have uh, national international colleges so students from outside also come so it's a central hub for. It's one of the important hubs in India, and uh, you have few ancient sacred places also, and you have a lot of tourist destination. Uh, two main religions, Buddhism and Jainism, emerged from this state, and for a chain that we rarely have a Buddhist or a Jain monk residing here these days. So next, next slide. So as per the yeah, next, I explained all this. Yeah. So as per the altitude areas I have given. Okay. So yeah, like I said, that Patna is uh, surrounded by three rivers. In the north, you will see the river Ganges. In the south, river Punkun and west Tom. So it is well. You can see though how well the water connectivity is there. So and it's a very fertile alluvial soil, so it, which is very rich for agriculture. And yeah, next. Okay, so now I'll just brief you quickly about the few important sites here. So this is the Ganga Ghat. It's a, so there are many ghats you'll find here, and few of them would name around Mahatma Gandhi. I'm pretty sure a lot of you must be knowing about him. Like he is known as the father of nation in India. So Gandhi Ghats and beautiful ghats. You have uh, uh, evenings, arties, like it's a form of worship, like to worship the river god. In the evening and all. So, next is the Golgar. So, it is uh, the granary which was built during 1754 by the Britishers in India. It, it was basically, uh, you know, made for uh, flood and famine to, you know, deal with that thing. And uh, it's uh, the only granary which is there from that period. It was uh, made during the colonial period. By Warren Hastings, and uh, yeah. So next, please. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, the city is a hub of a lot of religions. So one of them is uh, Sikhism. So they have ten major gurus, like major heads, and the tenth one was born here. So they consider it one of the sacred, and they have five places throughout the world which they consider themselves. To go definitely for some pilgrimage, so this is one of them. Next is Buddha Smriti Park. Like I said, Buddhism emerged from this city and then spread throughout the world. And uh, yeah, so this is one of the recent Buddha Smriti Park where you will find the relics of Buddha from all over the world. So a lot of international tourists get attracted towards this. And it was on, inaugurated by 14th Dalai Lama. Next is uh, Bihar Museum. Like it is the repository of uh, ancient uh, antiquities and different places. I am a part of this. So if ever you come here, you should definitely visit the place. Next. This is Mahatma Gandhi Setu. It is one of the largest bridges in India. So it connects Patna with Hajipur, which is another 
district in Bihar, and it, the river is River Ganga. So it's a next, please. So coming straight to the city. So how the COVID-19 is is persisting in my city? It's as of now low, but the cases are increasing. There are only 33 cases, which was the date of yesterday. Today again, six more people have you know became the victim of this COVID. So we can see that the rate of interest is increasing day by day. There are 33 cases as of now, and then there are many uh, administrative officers and state heads. They are trying to work on it and the I, I, a few initiatives from them is that uh, they have started with the house you know door-to-door -door surveys that they are conducting and checking people so till sunday till last sunday 21st 21.14 lakhs people have um, been surveyed and uh, 43 4.36 lakhs households have been surveyed and it's still going on so till now 14 64 samples were taken so they what happens is they come come like the entire team is of 1090 they have subdivided the team into 375 people and then two 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 they keep on going to door to door and they'll go keep on asking you questions whether you're having symptoms of fever cough whether you're having problems in breathing so as for that the data is collected so now what matters is you have to be honest. If you, if you lie, then it's again a threat to your family and society. So it's a thing that is, so district magistrate is the head, which, and I'll be using the word DM for it. So he is doing that from door to door survey, and specifically the they are doing surveys on the places where people have come from outside. They have a travel history, be it another state in India, it doesn't matter, but they, if, and uh, so they have the those can you know list with them. So the government is trying to work on that. And then uh, next slide, please. So in uh, in the state, Patna, like the Bihar, we have chief ministers. After prime ministers, the it's the chief ministers who deal with the state. So the, as per him, the infection is found in the, only in the migrant workers and the others who have returned. Yeah, next slide, please. So, who have returned from different parts of the country. It is not at all in, indigenous in nature. The travel history of people and the movement of people they came in contact with, those are the ones who are, you know, spreading. Do not intentionally, because a lot of times, now there are cases coming up when they are not even developing the symptoms. And suddenly, like, there are many, like, who don't have many harsh symptoms in them. So it has become a very complicated issue now, but still. So infection is spreading at a faster pace through their co their contacts only. There are this is the major reason in the city and no other reasons as of now. Next slide, please. So how the government of India has divided, like how to locate that uh, and deal with the major issues. So to the government of India. Okay, so wait, why I'm again, you know, switching to government of India and government. In the city government because india is a federation country and the health department comes in the conference list which is dealt by both state and centers so that is how we ha you have to get the context that both the governments are trying to uh, work together so the government of india has divided the entire country into three zones red zones white zones and green zones so red zones are the all those districts which have the a lot of numbers of COVID-19 affected cases and they are eventually rising day by day. When we come to orange zone, so in orange zone, <coughs> sorry, so in orange zone, you have COVID cases relatively low and then they, you don't have new more cases. It restricts to one and then coming to green zone, you don't have any COVID cases. There are few states like Goa and uh, Manipur like where you don't have any COVID cases right now after the because after the lockdown no one can move from one place to place and the criteria from shifting from red zone to orange zone is and from orange to green is the 14 days of analysis that the government takes if for the 14 days for example someone if it is residing in the uh, red zone and for the 14 days 
and the, the government sees that no new cases have come up so then this district can shift it to orange zone so all these states have to you know it's very important to understand in which zone you have so that you can have the implementation policies and the regulatory reform according to that next so where does the patna comes in so it comes in the orange zone yeah next so and there are no deaths as of now yeah next so the nation wide lockdown has happened in india on 25th march 24th of march our prime minister announced that the nation wide lockdown will happen from the midnight and then no trans public transportation a lot of nothing will work on from so no basic connectivity from one state to another except essential commodities so then the cases were continuously rising so then we came the he came up with the uh, lockdown 2.0 which is only for 19 days earlier it was for 21 days and then the government came up with 19 days and the state government and the central government keep on happening the virtual meetings with them so in which uh, they in fact sit in the distance like two feet distance which is a mandatory for now so next please so lo- lockdown was the policy adopted here the state and the entire nation wide lockdown so the, uh, the indian government and the state government and patna is combating with a mechanism in which the state and central government are cooperating together it cannot happen only the one government you know relying on the uh, implementation policies and the state government so it's for the both and then next so our city head which is the chief minister its slogan is don't say stay conscious see when if you are leading a state it's very important how you portray so he has tried is trying to develop the moral support to the people of patna that no you have to you definitely you don't fear so much stay conscious follow the rules and then stay at home you will be safe cooperate with the uh, you know state department so he came up with the relief package for poor like the, uh, for a middle class and a higher class definitely they will they have the uh, you know surplus to right now to cope up with at least for the short span of period so but for the poor like state is definitely the responsibility so as a responsibility the government came up with 100 crore relief package for the poor and they identified them they tried to reach over them so health ministry has three major centers for treatment so in the patna city you, we, you you have three centers for treatment where if you, you can go get yourself tested regarding the covid and uh, then uh, treatment would be there so they have ppe kits and other things so screening had on throughout like for example bihar shares its border with uh, nepal so at the 49 points you can find that strict screening has been there because definitely it's coming from outside india so we have to be very strict at the border and the government is following this policy screening is done thoroughly uh, even at the airport all those people in, who are even coming from the other states government makes sure that all the screening is done at the airport also you will find the airport health officer who you have to fill that form and then you know you have to be honest that is something government can do and then if whenever the government sees that okay you have some symptoms or if you are suspected for the covid it's a threat for state so and we have to protect that so you will be put under like there are many uh disaster management relief centers that government has formed and even outside the states they have like to see outside the states for those people who are from this state so you you have to see other camps outside the india to you know help them so people who are suspected they are kept in hospital for surveillance next then the state department meetings like uh, the all those people who are in policy making and implementation they have to be there and they, they are working 24/7 these days And um is that it just uh, remind you that you on just only have a uh, uh, two minutes again okay okay so i'll quickly wind it up 
the setting up of disaster relief centuries i have said outright state people okay so you can skip the slide next slide please so free they are spray, you know distributing free rations to all the ration card holders all the pensioners are given three months salary in advance so whatever concession the government of india is, uh, government of uh, the city government is giving is that you the groceries vegetables fruits there are concessions on that and all the essential goods online payments are preferred there are many online apps from where you can order next and all the state and central government offices are open and uh, it is divided into three groups a is the most senior most which are supposed to come and b c people are coming on the rotations of one third basis and concessions are given to agriculture because it's a harvesting season and it doesn't affect the economy next the government schemes on road to okay i think I've, next 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 spoken about it yeah so in yeah so this is a arogya setu app which the government of india has built and it keeps you updated next next so it keeps on updating you about the latest informations about the covid next yeah next so like india is uh, ranked among few okay potential impact short term long term so uh, our poverty threat wages these are you can see it on the screen yeah so next so is there anything positive we are getting out of it yes definitely a lot of it like i can quote one like dobrovsky which i might think that you all must be knowing is a polish psychologist who studied uh, the survivors from world war 2 and then he came up with a conclusion that the people are getting after facing uh, definitely a traumatic phase uh, are now even a better responsible people and even in fact a happier so you know keeping my fingers crossed we shall overcome this as soon as possible and yes we have we have to learn the responsibility from it and uh, yeah that's how i would like to end thank you so much okay thank you very much uh, thank you isani for your presentation uh, i would like to highlight what isani said that um, uh, local government were totally supporting the citizen of patna even only 30 33 suspected covid cases and uh, now uh, they are facing an imported case uh, covid 19 disease and uh, how uh, uh, we can see the lockdown in pass 1 in pass 2 uh, from uh, india and it is very uh, difficult time for for them to face facing the uh, covid 19 pandemic all right then uh, we can Uh, now we move to the second speakers. I please to Mr. Dimas from Manchester. The time is yours, Mr. Dimas. Please. Uh, yeah, Mas, mau izin saya share screen saya sendiri ya, bisa ya? Yes, yes, please. Yes, please. Um, ya bisa di enable nggak mas ini share screennya? Um, house, uh, please uh, can you help me untuk membantu mas Dimas? Oke okay, oke okay, silakan. Yes please, Mister uh, Mas Dimas. Oke. Okay. Ya yeah, thank you. Ya. Yeah. <coughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, good morning, uh, everyone. So yes, just to make the time concise, uh, just get through to uh, the material that I've prepared for this uh, webinar. So yes, this is Manchester. Uh, there's the reason I put uh, this symbol, the B symbol. Which symbolizes the the uh, the city of Manchester as the cover of presentation is just to give you an idea about what the, what the city has evolved. They put B as a symbol of hard work, productivity, and uh, the contribution to the uh, national economy, which gives you an idea how vibrant and how dynamic the city is in itself, and of course. 
how uh, the COVID-19 has put some uh, major impacts to the uh, economy and the well-being in many ways. Uh, so yes, this is just to give you an idea about uh, what or where and how is Manchester. So it's located somewhere in the northwestern uh, part of England. Um, and the population for Greater Manchester uh, is approximately 2.5 million. Meanwhile, the city is called 575,400 uh, people in 2019. Um, in relation to the B as a symbol of the city, um, there was, uh, I mean, I mean, th this claim uh, came uh, out of the historical movement of this city in itself. Well, this might be debatable, but, but, but the people of Manchester claims that this city was the kilometer zero of the first industrial revolution between uh, 1760 to 1825. It was uh, uh, renowned as the uh, major uh, cotton industry uh, in uh, um, across the uh, across the uh, across worldwide. The economic growth, uh, yes, the, it exceeds the national uh, growth. So, as so I remember, the, the last figure was uh, approximately five uh, percent. The University of Manchester, uh, which holds a huge uh, student body of around 30,000 uh, students uh, coming from uh, different parts of the world. Um, and also, it's also claiming themselves as the capital of football. Yeah, because, yes, there's two big Premier League rivals. There's the National uh, Football Museum and uh, yeah, and so the culture of football and, and yeah. So this is uh, about, so I'll just put this, yeah. So this is, these are some popular landmarks. I mean, if uh, some of you have, have had the chance to visit this city, uh, the attraction, not very much, but it's not far from this two stadiums, the Old Trafford and the Ed Stadium. And the, uh, the right below corner is the Manchester CBD, the urban centers. And the left uh, bottom picture is an area we call it Castlefield. This is where the kilometer zero of the Industrial Revolution, the first railway systems in the world, which connects uh, Manchester and Liverpool, so this now have evolved into a vibrant entertain entertainment area with bars, cafes, restaurants. Uh, so one of the best places to get around Manchester and to see uh, how the social life uh, dynamically evolves. And yes, the until the 25th of April, the United Kingdom have recorded uh, approximately 153,000 of positive coronavirus cases with 20,000 uh, more deaths. Um, in Greater Manchester itself, um, um, 5,884 cases were recorded and uh, 989 of those uh, were found in the city of Manchester. Um, which accounts 16% of the total case of the region. Um, regarding the curve, so this here, you can see uh, that until 25th of April, there are four, uh, approximately 4,900 daily cases. Uh, but with regards to the curve, yes, it seems that uh, the UK has already flattened the curve, which hopefully uh, no uh, further significant increase is expected to happen in the next following days. And 
Okay. Uh, so I, I, I put this on the presentation to stress about, so th there are relatively a, uh, um, an interesting figure why the city of Manchester has contributed in a, a lower than expected number of coronavirus cases in the great Manchester region. So the 20th, uh, despite the 23 population lives in Manchester, uh, but it was only 16% of the cases were found. Well, of course, it's significant, but, but uh, some would wonder why uh, there are uh, also a large number of cases, in fact, found in the surrounding regions, not in the CBD, where density is much, much higher. So we kind of see of the, uh, um, the profile of the population, the distribution based on the ages. So indeed, most of those living in the urban centers are those uh, aged somewhere 36, 33 below. Most of the aging, the elderly lives in the surrounding regions in the rural areas, where of course uh, it contributes somehow to the, uh, the number of the uh, positive cases. Uh, this happens, I mean, this is possible because uh, we're not, Kind of, we kind of left left behind with with testing and so on. So uh, until like a week ago, only those who are ill, who are admitted to hospitals, are those um, uh, eligible for tests. So we assume that those who are elderly who are showing symptoms are those the one who have access to test before others. Yes, um, also overviewing this uh, nationwide. So of course it raises the questions of density, urban density. So if we look at this figure, I put here in, uh, just for instance, the city of Westminster, which uh, is one of the uh, most densely populated cities around the United Kingdom. If, you, if some of you uh, are wondering where is Westminster? So, and it's where most of the attractions in London are located. So the Big Ben, the um, uh, Buckingham Palace and so on. So the density level is 12,000 people per square kilometers. But uh, the cases there are, related, uh, are quite low. So 573 uh, cases. Yeah, and also if we um, uh, look at Birmingham, which is the second largest city in the in, in United Kingdom by population, but with somehow uh, uh, a much, much lower density, 3,649 people, but with the cases quite low, uh, quite, quite high in 2,618. So um, the question now, uh, why, why do Birmingham have, uh, despite uh, the low, density and the relatively high case uh, proportionate to the total population. Um, so I've, I've seen some reviews, some analysis uh, regarding this figure. So it was more related to the, uh, the existing uh, pre-existing pre, pre underlying conditions of the patients who uh, were treated in the hospital. So they, they were already, already ill, then they got infected in the hospital, which add uh, to the significant increase in the overall figure of the coronavirus cases. And also this is an interesting uh, study, or just despite the, the conclusion for the first webinar, where it states clearly that the, the, uh, the, uh, the contribution of, of, of uh, density to the spread of the Spanish flu disease back in 1918. But uh, this interesting article shows that at some point, uh, it was not actually density, neither pop, uh, population size or residential crowding were uh, the main factors of the spread of the, of the, or, or, or the transmission of the disease and the death rates, particularly in England and Wales. But uh, my, uh, these, the study suggests that most of these transmission death rates and uh, the things that worsen the spread or the, of, of the uh, disease were related to urbanization, which involves more population migration and mobility. Um, 
yeah, uh, I'd like to stress out a bit of the, um, the profile of commuters. So yes, in Greater London, 18,000 uh, positive cases were found uh, compared to Manchester with only 989 uh, positive cases. So if you, if you look at the figure of the, uh, the commuters where the workers uh, um, resides, uh, where they traveled from to work uh, either in uh, Greater London or Manchester. So we can see the very uh, widespread commuters uh, of Greater London coming from anywhere. So this uh, was, uh, this suggests one of the uh, uh, cases contributing the, to the very high figure now United Kingdom is facing 153,000 positive cases. So uh, indeed, yes, yeah, so late response is the key why the United Kingdom now has one of the most cases uh, following Italy, uh, Spain, Germany. So if we can see this figure itself, United Kingdom put measures for lockdown and they didn't do it until the, uh, the late or the fourth week of March. So this has contributed with high commuting, late measures for lockdown. There you are, 153,000 cases. Um, there are also talks about uh, possibilities linking the cases with some sporting events, although this is under, con uh, under investigation. So it's quite, quite clumsy how they see this. This is the news uh, from two to three days ago. Oh no, yeah, four, four to five days ago. So if some of you are aware about the, uh, the UFA Champions League match between Liverpool and Atletico Madrid held in Anfield Stadium back in 11th of March with 52,000 uh, attendees where 3,000 of them are coming from Madrid. So this came as a speculation of linking um, uh, the two cities, Liverpool or North, uh, Northwest England and Madrid. Um, also, there, there was this festival, the Cheltenham Festival, uh, which, which uh, is a horse racing festival held six, between 16th to 19th of March with attendance of more than 250,000. So they are on raising an, an alarming concern, some investigation to put forward to these uh, two sporting events. So uh, I'm interested to see how the outcome of the investigation would be. So yes, uh, just uh, very short about how the government responds to the outbreak. So health advice, stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. Uh, so only go out when it is, it is essential and keep apart two meters. Well, it's, it, this measure is one of the uh, hardest um, doing it more than once a week. Is that essential? So these kind of debates are questions uh, that I found arising with, or, uh, within people in Manchester. Uh, lockdown, it's, it's different from, from what's uh, currently happening in, in Indonesia, a very strict lockdown. So uh, until today, we are still able to travel between cities. Public transport has not been totally shut down. It's been limited, yes, but, but it's still possible to travel anyway. Although the advice is only travel on essential uh, proposes. And uh, yes, the economy uh, is being hit quite uh, hard, some difficult times uh, experienced by uh, business holders in, in, in Manchester in particular. So there's been a package of support uh, from city council for those who are affected financially. Um, and um, yeah, so just to conclude, so what causes the outbreak in Manchester and the, or in the UK in overall with the high figures? First is indeed the impact of Europe as a global epicenter um, coming immediately after China have shown to flatten their curve. And the slow responses of authorities, of course, uh, the idea of herd immunity uh, came out in the minds of our government, uh, which 
uh, was criticized. Uh, I mean, uh, are we really ready yet? Are, is our health system ready uh, for uh, herd uh, immunity uh, policy and so on? Commuting, population mobility, yeah. And then sporting events, which is under investigation. Some notes, some lessons. So yes, uh, by looking at the cases in Birmingham and how the figure in Greater Manchester itself. So it is essential to map where the vulnerable people live. So those with underlying conditions, those of the elderly uh, people and to deliver more uh, or better policy outcomes. And enforced uh, restriction on commuting. Well, this is debatable, but I see this has been uh, a more uh, point of, uh, of those criticizing um, um, governments who are putting uh, uh, responses that is considerably a bit too late. Yeah, so, and the long term, which we can take part in this uh, initiative is, well, yes, commuting is a good sign of economic growth, but distributing jobs equally across the region will add values whilst reducing commuting and therefore containing disease transmission. So this just uh, the final slides about uh, how Manchester plans themselves uh, in, uh, expected in 2035, how they are, have been trying to redistribute jobs out of the urban centers. So uh, this, uh, the new jobs out of the CBD here, it's called, uh, this is the uh, airport city agenda. So they're putting more and more business um, um, facilities, uh, industries, which have more for the high skilled and technology uh, information industries to be located somewhere down in the southern part. So uh, it's actually distributing the burden of the urban centers, uh, redistributing the polycentric um, economic growth, which in the uh, longer run will help to reduce the commuting. So it's more of like uh, uh, how to be, how, how, how to redistribute growth across uh, the nation. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, thank you. For the time I return this to the moderator. Thank you very much, uh, Dimas, uh, for yes. your uh, fantastic presentation. Uh, I'm highlight what uh, Dimas said that in Great Manchester region, uh, we found a large number of the impact on economy, uh, sport event, uh, especially football games, traveling, healthcare. Uh, how uh, the government, local, local government take care of the healthcare uh, and the uh, um, transportation. Uh, everything is gets impact of a uh, uh, COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic. So um, thank you for your presentation, uh, Dimas. Uh, now we move yes. to the third speaker. Uh, I please to Mr. Nizar from Riyadh. The time is yours. You have a uh, 15 minutes, please. Oke, okay. uh, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, this uh, pleasure, pleasure to be with you for sharing uh, about uh, COVID-19 uh, in related with uh, uh, spatial. Uh, Oke, okay. we'll share with you the. Let me share my presentation. Oke. Okay. Actually, I'm working here for uh, uh, around uh, seven or eight years in uh, Saudi Arabia. So what do you think about uh, Saudi? <sighs> Let me think. Maybe you, Saudi is a, a religious country or uh, Umrah or uh, Hajj, Haji or uh, desert, uh, but not that all. Okay, I will discuss in 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 uh, English sometime in Indonesia because I know uh, for interactively we can start in uh, Indonesia time. Okay, <clears throat> because I already started with uh, an Ali in, in in English. So for interactive, let me choose in uh, Indonesia. But it's now you can see the, the English person in the presentation. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. Can you presentation?
Can you see this one? Okay. Yes. <coughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Riyadh, Riyadh itu uh, capital of Saudi. Uh, dia berada di in the middle of the Saudi Peninsula, in the Arabian Peninsula, di tengah. Kalau kita lihat ada Mekah, ada Madinah di situ, sebelah barat, berbatasan dengan Jordan, Yaman, uh, Oman, uh, uh, Qatar, uh, Uni Emirat Arab, Irak. <tuh> Ini nomor tiga kota terbesar di total population seven and six million people. Ini demografik yang saya dapatkan. Sekarang yang saya dapatkan nyata jelas sekitar 7 million, 7 million dengan populasi 35 persen Saudi, sisanya Saudi. Jadi populasi non-Saudi di kota Riyadh dan ini hampir sama dengan kota-kota yang lain di Saudi. Jadi penduduk Saudi itu sekitar 35 persen. Indian are the largest minority population uh, follow by Pakistani. India dan kemudian Pakistan. Oke, okay. uh, ini growth uh, urban uh, special growth. Uh, kita tahu Saudi itu sejarahnya dari Kerajaan Al Saud, Abdul Aziz uh, Al Saud pendirinya, itu berada di kota Riyadh, jadi bukan di pendirinya. Pendiri Saudi itu berada di kota Riyadh, tepatnya desa namanya desa Najat, desa Najat itu di kota. Kita bisa lihat uh, perkembangan dari desa, kemudian beralih menguasai Mekah Madinah dan menguasai seluruh Arab. Dan kita lihat di sini pertumbuhan dari 85 sampai 95. Growth ini cukup pesat sekali, lagi ketika ditemukan uh, minyak amko dan dibantu oleh uh, Barat, pesisir timur, jadi growth cukup tinggi. Dari kota yang sekecil itu jadi besar sehingga sekarang. Nah, kita bisa populasi uh, uh, Saudi dan non-Saudi. Dan ini kenapa saya tampilkan? Karena ini pengaruh terhadap uh, penyebaran covid Kita lihat uh, Riyadh itu 20 persen populasi dari Saudi. Dan kemudian ini 40 persen itu non Saudi, 59 persen Saudi. Jadi kebanyakan ekspatriat ini bekerja di bidang-bidang worker, construction, uh, groceries, uh, uh, middle middle job seperti doctor, uh, kemudian engineer seperti itu. Kota Riyadh, kita bisa lihat kota Riyadh, uh, currently it's sunny, uh, it's going to summer in the next uh, month, so from and uh, summer. Jadi di ada dua ada dua ada dua iklim, yaitu musim dingin dan musim panas. Jadi Saudi itu ada juga musim di sekitar bulan November. Uh, sampai Februari itu dingin sekali kan sekitar tujuh atau delapan tahun yang lalu sempat minus satu tapi kalau panas itu bulan Ramadan seperti saat ini dan lagi itu bisa sampai 50 50 derajat Celsius nah uh, what do you think about Saudi or, or Riyadh is not only desert not only desert, not only Makkah Madinah But you can see di or valley like this one. Ada 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 danau. Kemudian uh, uh, you can see red sand. Jadi tarian itu dikelilingi oleh oleh uh, gurun pasir. Mereka riat berada di tengah-tengah jazirah oleh gurun pasir. Antar kota itu jaraknya sekitar apa yang paling dekat itu 200 km yang paling dekat dari kota Riyadh. Kemudian ke Madinah, Mokah Madinah itu sekitar 800 atau 900 km. Jadi antar kota itu sangat sekali. 
dan dihubungkan beberapa oleh kereta api dan uh, bus. Nah, kota Riyadh sendiri uh, secara uh, punya landmark, itu King Dong Tower, 300 meter. Kita bisa lihat di sini bahwa landmark uh, beberapa ya, ataupun uh, gedung-gedung yang tidak terlalu tinggi seperti kota Jakarta. Jadi kalau orang Saudi datang ke Indonesia itu sangat 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 apa? Ternyata Indonesia itu punya gedung-gedung yang sangat tinggi sekali. Berbeda dengan dengan Saudi karena hanya beberapa yang tinggi. Rata-rata gedung di Saudi itu sekitar hanya tiga lantai, paling pol tiga empat gitu. Yang tinggi cuma ya dihitung jari gitu. Public transportation there are in si bus uh, uh, online transportation dan bahkan sekarang ada woman jadi sejak diperbolehkan uh, wanita nyupir sekarang ada woman driver khusus untuk uh, wanita di situ ada pelis ada istana ada office building yang saya ceritakan tadi housing villa ini nanti ini sangat, sangat berpengaruh terhadap pola penyakit COVID. Jadi rumah-rumah di Saudi itu te temboknya tinggi, tebal, dan punya pintu masuk yang berbeda. Kemudian uh, mereka umumnya tinggal dalam satu satu keluarga besar. Ada kakek, ada nenek, ada ayah, ibu, paman, gitu kan. Uh, tapi punya pintu yang berbeda dan ipar tidak boleh bertemu dengan saudara ipar yang lain. Misalkan adik ipar perempuan dengan kakak ipar laki-laki yang nasab itu tidak boleh bertemu. Jadi sangat separated, sangat terpisahkan, dan ini mempengaruhi pola kebaran covid Dan antar tetangga sendiri, kadang-kadang mereka dikenal karena berbeda adanya tembok yang tinggi itu. Yang keempat, di sini ada slum area atau labor camp, labor camp yang eh, bekerja, yang mereka tinggal di di camp-camp atau asrama-asrama yang eh, cukup tinggi densitasnya, satu kamar itu bisa sampai 12 orang atau lebih bahkan. Dan ini berpengaruh terhadap pola penyebaran COVID sendiri. Kita ketahui di Singapura ataupun di Dubai yang kan pekerja labor itu most infected by by this COVID. Oke, okay. ini Covid dashboard by Minister of uh, currently there are the thousand active case and uh, sorry seventeen thousand and uh, active case fifteen thousand and uh, death uh, one one hundred forty four. Di tingkat Uh, cukup tinggi sekali saya rasa. Nah, nanti saya jelaskan berikutnya kenapa cukup tinggi ada 15.000 kasus aktif 144 kasus meninggal jadi sekitar 1% kurang dari 1% persentase. sekitar uh, 10% sepuluh, uh, sepuluh yang recovery Nah, Saudi Arabia policy uh, first uh, February, I think in February or yes, February, they close the Umrah in the holy monks in Mak and suspend deliverying in all monks. It, uh, kita sudah tahu bahwa Umrah dihentikan di Mak dan Mina, kemudian tidak boleh beribadah di Masjid Mak sejak saat itu. Kemudian menutup border sekitar Bahrain, Dubai, dan travel ban, kemudian menutup 
mall, grocery, kecuali grocery dan farmasi dan hospital. Kemudian King Salman memberikan pidato bahwa free treatment for the COVID patient. Kemudian pastikan produksi barang dan distribusi berjalan dengan lancar. Ini yang yang cukup bagus bahwa pun ataupun memberikan kelonggaran tiga pada uh, installment apa tuh ya installmentnya uh, cicilan ya tiga bulan cicilannya edit ada cicilan tiga bulan yang ditangguhkan selama kemudian stop transportation taksi bus train stop kemudian ada limited movement ada curfew atau jam malam dari jam uh, eh, sorry dari jam uh, Tiga sore sampai jam 6 pagi, itu jam malam, melanggar ada denda sepuluh ribu real atau dirupiahkan sekitar 40 juta. Kemudian total lockdown in the city and in district. Beberapa sekitar dua tahun yang lalu, total lockdown 24 jam, boleh keluar asal ke grocery, cari makanan atau farmasi atau hospital kita nggak bisa keluar ke kota yang lain kita keluar ke distrik yang lain total 24 jam kemudian setelah itu mereka melakukan swab masif testing karena bahwa sekitar 80 persen the covid patient are infected the worker in housing in the in the labor camp That's why they're doing massive testing, and dan mereka memperbarui policy untuk untuk asrama. Jadi satu orang sampai berpuluh-puluh satu satu kamar bisa memenuhi sekitar dua puluh. Jadi ada per terhadap policy housing launch aplikasi. Online movement permit. Jadi kalau mau pergi ke distrik yang lain dari distrik yang saya ada ini, yang lain untuk uh, ke hospital, ke rumah sakit, ataupun hal-hal yang darurat itu ada aplikasinya. Shopping online hanya orang yang di atas 15 tahun bisa shopping. Saudi charity. Nah untuk Ramadan ini ada kelonggaran yang sebenarnya cukup mengagetkan juga. Jadi loss 24 jam itu mulai di, dikurangi. Jadi kecuali Mekah, karena Mekah tak Mekah ternyata nomor satu penyebaran Saudi. Jadi sekarang sudah tidak 24 jam lagi di Mekah. Kemudian mall sudah mau dibuka, tidak ada uh, pembayaran, tetap melakukan cara elektronik tidak dilakukan dengan tes. Okay, uh, ini traweh dan dan uh, sholat di Saudi sudah melakukan beberapa uh, polisi hanya dilakukan oleh uh, pekerja dan uh, karyawan di di Masjidil Haram. Kemudian ini tadi saya sudah ceritakan. Nah, ini ini uh, lockdown. You can see here the district lockdown bit, uh, between the, in the cities. Uh, in the border there are policy which is uh, keep in the border. Jadi ada ada polis yang mereka berjaga-jaga di sekitar line bisa sekitar 10 10 mob. Jadi kita nggak bisa keluar dari distrik belanja kita hanya bisa belanja dan uh, belanja untuk cari hidup ataupun ke farmasi di dalam di dalam distrik kalau kita mau keluar distrik kita pakai uh, online movement permit ada aplikasinya melanggar 10.000 atau sekitar 40 juta di, di in the first time in the second one lagi 20.000 sekitar 80 juta kalau melanggar lagi penjara 20 hari ya. ini masif testing nah, ini ada policy baru terhadap worker 
bisa dilihat di sini karena kebanyakan patient persen non Saudi. Ini shopping policy kita under low. Tadi saya cerita ceritakan no payment by cash. Ini uh, aplikasi. Ini ada charity pekerja di government untuk untuk para uh, citizen atau resident yang tidak yang yang miskin yang tidak kemampuan untuk beli uh, sembako. Oke, okay, so, so the, the, the point is uh, Saudi mulai melonggarkan dari total 24 jam ke uh, ke partial ke partial lockdown kecuali di Mekah, tapi tetapi secara 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 grafik penyebaran masih tinggi masih dan kondisi red gitu. Terima kasih kepada kami kembalikan lagi. Thank you very much Nizar. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for your great presentation, Nizar. Um, a little brief from Nizar's presentation that uh, the, the, the sense density of housing layout in Riyadh were not too high, and uh, the number of suspect COVID-19 rise dramatically. And as a result, it is impacts on suspend religious activities, uh, the government closing the borders and travel uh, ban in and out of the country, social facility closing, Uh, and uh, uh, the leader of Saudi, King Salman, has announced that the people of Saudi were free to uh, access the healthcare, and also uh, uh, postpone three months installment payment. That's uh, the uh, the great news from uh, uh, King Saudi uh, for their citizens. And thank you, Nizar, for your presentation. And now next we move to. Uh, the fourth, the last but not least, the speaker from uh, Hefei, uh, China, uh, Ali. Ali, um, you have a uh, 15 minutes uh, for your presentation, and please, the time is yours. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, 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 first of all, I want to know: Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, okay. clear. My voice is clear? Yes, absolutely. Okay, 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 thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I'm really thankful uh, to the team of the IAP, which invited me to uh, speak on a coronavirus, uh, but I'm not going to repeat all of these things which my co-speakers already explained. Uh, I am going to give you the brief introduction about my about my city and uh, uh, regarding uh, the, the prefectures of the city. And uh, first of all, I want to tell uh, I want to tell you about myself. Uh, and uh, I am the student in China and doing a master MPhil uh, from University of Science and Technology. That university is uh, in, in the uh, center of the city, Hefei. Hefei, actually the capital of the Anhui province, which is adjacent to the Hubei province, Wuhan. And uh, everyone uh, know about the Wuhan is the epidemic uh, before that. Uh, but right now the situation is so good in uh, Wuhan and uh, other cities as well. Okay, I'm going to explain uh, about uh, the main, uh, the first of all, I'm not going to explain the corona symptoms which uh, already explained by, uh, my others. Uh, uh, co-speakers like what is corona everyone know about the corona how they spread it and how it's uh, spreading and the my next thing is like uh, cafe i'm going to explain you about uh, where is the cafe adjacent if you see the slide uh, the spread of the coronavirus in china the third slide uh, can you show me uh, can you show us sir like uh, the anhui province which is adjacent to the hubei wuhan uh, i can see my slides Uh, can you show me the slides? Okay. Hello. Yes. Hello. Can you? Yes. Yes. Can, yes. We can hear it. Can you? Show, yes. Can you show the slides, please? I can't see slides. Okay. It's okay. And uh, uh, I'm going to explain. Like uh, the, I have already tell you about uh, the Anhui province, which is adjacent to the Hubei province, and Hubei was one of the epi uh, epidemic center of the. Wuhan. And uh, right now the situation is in uh, China is uh, quite well and the, all, uh, all of the factories and industries are already uh, going to be open. 
and uh, the things are normal even in the university and schools and colleges. Uh, the second uh, point I, I'm going to highlight uh, is that like uh, the spreading in the coronavirus in Wuhan and in, in my, my city. In Wuhan, it was uh, drastically changing and the, fact, uh, the figures are going up in the start of the coronavirus when it uh, outbreak is uh, started. And the cases was in Wuhan is too high, but in uh, Hafei and uh, the uh, effective time, effective management of the city lockdown and the other government measures, uh, they, they just reduce the cases. And uh, the cases was, uh, total cases in my city is just 174 and the death is just one one death and now it's uh, almost all all of the uh, cases are recovered and in my city there is no case uh, since from uh, uh, march 8 and the they also they also put some kind of uh, uh, mm, there's some uh, some kind of uh, different level to open the uh, uh, universities because there are so many students uh, who are living in in uh, in china as a foreigner and the other student as well because if they will come if they will come uh, back and if they have the asymmetric behavior of the coronavirus the for example for instance that person who already have the coronavirus but his symptom is not showing uh, uh, in 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 14 days and 22 days uh, the the person that person can spread the coronavirus very easily uh, that thing they just uh, um, took measures some measures and they apply on uh, on university level on small level and after that they just changing from small level to the high level and what they are doing actually they are conducting the coronavirus test is a free of cost for every person even is a foreigner and a chinese when they come back to the university and uh, they conduct that coronavirus if the coronavirus is negative uh, uh, they allow to the students who come inside the university and even in uh, come inside uh, the uh, province to province and other thing, if it's a uh, positive, so they move that person into the hospital for self uh, for quarantine 14 days, and they also you know, use medication to recover it. Uh, the next one is uh, I'm going to highlight then the cycle of the coronavirus in my city, the uh, Hafei. The first case is reported uh, in uh, Wuhan in 31st December, and they also alert to the WHO World Health Organization about that case. And after that, uh, they just uh, apply the uh, apply the restrictions, uh, traveling is restrictions from Wuhan to other provinces first. And after that, they also block the airports international airports and the local airports to traveling because the travel is the one of the common path uh, to spreading the coronavirus from one person to another person because they are the so crowded areas and uh, after that it uh, the, there are some other crowded areas as well but first of all i am going to tell you like 31st december it is started in china and after that uh, it's going up and up and the, in mid feb it's like uh, the cases was on a peak in china after that in uh, March, like 8 March, there was no case in, in, in my city. Um, even in the other provinces as well, situation was uh, all same. But except Wuhan, uh, Wuhan is still have some cases and positive cases. Even we also have the 200, uh, 2000 imported cases from outside of the world, from the different countries, from UK, from USA, Italy, and Germany. There are so many persons that came to the China for the business purposes and the other one. They, they, they have asymmetric behavior and uh, the coronavirus is a positive. And the next next thing, like the people have the one myth about the coronavirus, like it's spreading from the cat, dog, like that kind of stuff. But uh, it's still now uh, the scientists and the scholars didn't prove that the coronavirus is spreading from the bat and the animal, pet animal, which uh, people usually keep in the houses. And yeah, uh, the one fact is uh, already everyone knew about uh, the SARS, uh, like the Mars and Mars, the, because the COVID is the family of the uh, Mars and the SARS. And the Mars spreading from the camel and uh, the SARS spreading from the, and the dogs. Uh, these, these are also the pet animals. And uh, that camel is also uh, people eat in uh, Arab countries and even the Muslim countries as well. So. It's another thing like uh, people are creating some kind of uh, myth you know, from the little knowledge uh, about uh, COVID-19, so how it's spreading from, uh, from animals to the, 
uh, human and from then human to human. I am telling you one more important thing. It's like uh, it's not like that. It's spreading from uh, uh, it's spreading from the animals uh, to the human because it's right now. Looks like um, Ali have a uh, trouble for the connection. Ali, can you still with us? Um, I'm sorry, um, ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a connection uh, problems with Ali. Um, Ali, can you still with us? Can you hear us? Ali? Okay then. Um, maybe uh, I need some help from the host to contact Ali again. Ali, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, yes, please, please continue. Okay, okay, okay. thank you so much. You still have uh, seven minutes uh, later, Ali. Ali. Oh, again, we have a connection problems here again. Okay. Um, so um, we're just waiting for Ali to uh, presenting his presentation now, but uh, unfortunately the uh, connection problems uh, getting worse now. So um, I think uh, we can move to the reviewer to Mr. Uh, Puturudi as a connecting guard. Um, maybe I need some help from host. Uh, is, is Puturudi still uh, connection with us? Having a connection with us? I cannot unmute. Oh, okay. 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 Please, Puturudi. Um, as a reviewer, uh, you have a uh, uh, fifteen minutes to uh, review uh, all this presentation. The time is yours, Put. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Reza. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Om oh, Swastiastu. I want, I want to say hello to Ishani Sinha. Hey, hi, Ishani. Hi, Timas Vishnu. Uh, your, uh, your English pronunciation is more British than, uh, <clears throat> is more British than uh, Boris, good I think. Afternoon, good afternoon. Yeah, yeah good afternoon. Yeah, yeah, I was on mute. That is why I couldn't reply. So. Okay, Sorry. it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, I Dimas. Yeah, your your English pronunciation is more uh, is more British than Tory Johnson, I think. You saw him Long time, uh, long time to see uh, face to face with uh, Dimas Vishnu. Hi, Sumiran Ali. Hi, Nisar Ehrami. Uh, that was very Hello, good. There. Yeah, hello. Uh, that was very Actually, good. I have an internet problem. I don't know it's now resolved or not. Ah. I, uh, oh, sorry, Ali. Um, um, we have a, a brief uh, your presentation, uh, but if you don't mind, we can just uh, continue to uh, reviewers right now session. Yes, yes, yes. No uh, problem. Okay. So that uh, after the reviewers uh, say the the. Uh, the things of uh, the idea of the uh, presentation, all of you, so we can uh, move to the uh, question and action. And, and okay, okay. Question. Thank you, Ali. Please, uh, Puturudi. Yeah, okay. That was very good and inspiring sharing from uh, all of the presenters. Uh, okay, let me now uh, review all the, the presentation. Uh, just in an in Indian case, uh, Specifically, partner, the Isani uh, 
she uh, she said about the secondary uh, the role of the city and she also mentioning the low infected cases no death cases and also travel in uh, sorry travel restriction and the uh, the important things uh, she said that uh, she uh, she was presenting that the government of india determines three zones related to covid-19 spreading and transmission yeah. Uh, namely red zone, uh, orange zone, and green zone. Red zone means uh, the hotspot district with outbreaks and clusters. Orange zone means non-hotspot district with cluster, and green zone with uh, non-infected. Non that is quite uh, useful for, uh, uh, for lesson learned uh, for Indonesian case. Also, uh, for the lockdown mechanism in India, uh, she said that uh, nation, the, the government of India uh, has been applied nationwide lockdown uh, 20, 21 days and 19 days. That's my, uh, uh, my curiosity that, is there any correlation between uh, zone classification and, and lockdown mechanism? Let's say uh, for uh, for red zone, uh, the government of India uh, has been applying uh, nationwide lo lockdown or uh, city lockdown or building lockdown, etc., uh, etc. Et and we move to uh, I move to <coughs> sorry Manchester case. Uh, he said also uh, he gave us the uh, the preview of uh, for. Uh, war cities, uh, Westminster, Liverpool, Manchester, and Birmingham, with the all uh, figures about a number of cases and their city. Uh, I assume that there is no strong correlation between density and number of cases. And also, he uh, he explained about the uh, the uh, the role of uh, the role of ur urbanization. He said that uh, death and transmission rate were more associated with urbanization, uh, which is involving uh, population migration and mobility. Uh, <clears throat> this was in line, I think, this was in line with the work uh, of Professor Mark Lipsitz uh, from the Department of uh, Epidemiology at Harvard University. He said that no uh, number of imported cases can be predicted by employing air travel volume estimates as estimates from Wuhan to any international destination using uh, a generalized linear, uh, linear rejection model. That is why he, he ever stated that there should be uh, at least five cases in Indonesia at the beginning of February this year, but the government of Indonesia denied it. Yeah. Also, uh, <clears throat> He said about lockdown mechanism, uh, let's say international restriction, uh, domestic travel ban, and so on and so on. Uh, uh, I moved to Riyadh cases uh, from Nizar Iromi. Uh, he said also that the alongside with uh, the, the low, uh, the low national death rate. And also, Riyadh performed the second fast spread uh, city after Mecca. He also mentioned about the curfew. Uh, when I read at the Wikipedia, uh, at the 8th of March, uh, they were temporarily halting all transport in and out of the Katif governorate, as Katif is identified as the source of the spreading. 24th of March, uh, a nationwide curfew has been applied from 7 p.m. to uh, to 6 a.m. 30 of March, all all movement to and from Jeddah Governorate are suspended. Starting 2 April, uh, the government of Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia has been applied 24-hour curfew in Mecca and Madinah and so on and so on. That is the uh, curfew uh, mechanism. 
that has been practicing uh, in uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, also, there are uh, mobility and transport restriction. Uh, starting from 6th of February, there are travel ban to China. And 28th of February, there, uh, there, are, there were temporary suspension of entry for Gulf Cooperation Council citizens to Mecca and uh, Medina. And starting on early February, Saudi Arabia has suspended direct passenger flights between uh, the kingdom and China. And also in 20 of March, uh, the government of Saudi Arabia uh, <clears throat> practicing suspended, suspended domestic flight, uh, trains, buses, taxis for uh, 14 days across the country. And now Hefei, Hefei is the capital of Anhui province. The total cases 174. Fatality rate is very low, under 1%. But in China, in total is 5.54%, Hubei 2.9%. Uh, the main point is uh, in 20, 28th of March, uh, the government of China has been practicing nationwide lockdown uh, alongside with the city lockdown, building lockdown, and also quarant uh, quarantine for 14 days. Uh, and now uh, I, I will explain the, uh, the selected issues uh, came from all, uh, the, all the four present. Uh, since uh, uh, respect, despite the fact that no strong correlation between density and number of cases, but uh, this is this is in uh, this is Manchester case. Yeah. But factually, density is the precondition for effective urban service provision, uh, and also density areas are the potential place to spreading of COVID-19 from the uh, perspective of social distancing measure. And there will be urgent need to think or to rethink about the, the densification. And the, uh, the more important issues uh, that uh, uh, explained, by, uh, explained by some, uh, some presenter is lockdown issue. Uh, there are two. Uh, there are two lessons learned uh, uh, concerning the lockdown. Uh, the the first lockdown um, Indian case and the second lockdown uh, lesson uh, lockdown lesson learned from uh, China case. Uh, but uh, let me explain. Uh, let me tell you the uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, the lockdown mechanism in, in Indonesia as uh, comparing to the cases of uh, India and China. Uh, that will be interesting to compare uh, with Indonesian lockdown. In uh, law number six to uh, 2018, there are uh, four categories of uh, Indonesian lockdown. The first one is karantina rumah or home quarantine. Uh, second is karantina rumah sakit or hospital quarantine, karantina wilayah number three or area quarantine that includes city lockdown, metropolitan area lockdown, uh, and so on and so on. Also, the uh, uh, the soft the soft one is PSBB, meaning uh, meaning that large scale social distancing. And uh, as you know that uh, the government of Indonesia is now practicing single type of lockdown, uh, namely PSBB. Since uh, government of Indonesia doesn't have the sufficient data uh, regarding the spreading and transmission of uh, COVID-19, uh, PSBB has been believed as panacea for any types of spreading and transmission. Uh, that was, that is ridiculous. Uh, but from my point of view, uh, since there are various types of transmission, there should be a mechanism to apply different instrument 
including uh, combination uh, combination among them let's say uh, the first transmission uh, is imported case transmission uh, this can can be uh, can be combat by uh, national lockdown or city lockdown the second is the second is uh, domestic transmission uh, Inter island can be inter island transmission, inter province transmission, or inter municipal transmission. This can be uh, can be handled, can be managed by island lockdown or, or provincial lockdown or metropolitan lockdown or uh, maybe just municipal lockdown. And uh, the last one is local transmission. This can be managed by home quarantine, hospital quarantine, and also the uh, soft. A mechanism, namely PSPB. The third uh, issues uh, regarding the provision of urban services. The sub issues, uh, the uh, the requirement for the planners to rethink the urban services system, and also to rethink this the centralization of urban services. The urban services system uh, may may contain provision system, the scale and hierarchy, uh, water housing and healthcare. Uh, as you know that in Hong Kong, some public housing uh, blocks for uh, requisitions for quarantine facilities. While in Italy, uh, the authorities in Genoa are converting a ferry to a hospital boat. And city may, uh, city may consider leaving small parcels of strategic urban land available in case temporary medical facilities or housing need to homeless people. <clears throat> uh, digital infrastructure, the fourth issue. That includes the development of a smart system, smart city, big data, uh, and also IoT. As you all uh, <clears throat> know that uh, China uh, has been mobilizing their big data to manage the COVID-19. South Korea, for example, uh, one of the countries worst affected by the disease, they success to uh, they, they success to do tracing by employing technological technological innovation to do some mapping and publication of infected patients uh, movement. Again, in China, uh, the authorities uh, enlisted the help of tech firm such as Alibaba and Tencent to track the spread of coronavirus uh, of COVID-19. And they are using big data to uh, analyze and to anticipate where transmission cluster will emerge uh, next. And also uh, the digital data should be created and broke down into local level. Uh, data is mainly now aggregated at the national level while, while many decisions on containment of any epidemic or pandemic are made at the local level. The need to, and also the need to the city, uh, the need uh, to planner to empower cities with more granular and regularly updated uh, data. The last one is about the issue of technology. Technology can help in combating COVID-19 by utilization of application on smart uh, data to track health trends. Big Asia countries, including uh, China, South Korea, Singapore, are using robots, drones, and big data to track the, the outbreak. Technologies uh, and now become a features in cities to flag potential problems for a quicker response, disinfect hospital, and deliver supplies. Uh, that's all uh, my review. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Putu Rudi, for your review. Um, that's a great review for Putu Rudi uh, about uh, COVID-19 pandemics uh, in Hefei, China, and uh, KSA, Manchester, and India. Uh, it is not, not fair enough uh, for us because of Ali is not uh, finished his presentation uh, um, so that we we would like to continue Ali's presentation. Ali, you have uh, five minutes left uh, so that uh, you can uh, finish your presentation. Thank you. 
So before we co come to, uh, we go to uh, 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 question and answer uh, session, we, we have to uh, move to Ali. Is, 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 time, is, is your time, Ali? Okay, yes. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Actually, I have continuous internet problem. I don't know why, but uh, I have. I even I can't uh, uh, properly listen the review of uh, the, the previous sir. I, even I don't know the name of that person. So it's okay. I will continue my slides. Uh, so I was on that, like how government, uh, uh, the physical aspects affecting, like uh, the lockdown, about the lockdown. Government uh, lockdown, the main, main, like first they analyzed where is the more crowded places was there and then why the people, how we can uh, close that one to, to maintain the social distancing between the people. That these are the, the main places like bars, clubs, pubs, parks, and the tourist places for those people usually go their way who do not have any uh, kind of the religious uh, uh, belongingness. And the other, other more, more important things are schools, universities, and the markets and the workplaces and religious places. And they just locked down all of these uh, places. And after that, they also uh, uh, determined that if the people, because the symptom is not showing on a, a bit in one to two weeks, that they just determine like 14 days is the minimum time period uh, for one person if it's someone is, has the coronavirus. So they just uh, make it the international rule for everyone if someone is coming and if someone is, has some kind of uh, uh, symptoms and they call like suspected that kind, that kind of persons are suspected and they put these person into the, the quarantine for 14 days. And I'm going to tell how they can manage all of the peoples like who already uh, like there's a big population, how they can manage the 14 days quarantine into the hospitals and uh, uh, other medical facilities, how they can provide. It's so hard to provide the, that kind of uh, facilities. Uh, that is my another slides. Uh, I'm going to explain the next one is, uh, uh, can you please next? Okay, the, the next is, uh, okay. And that is another aspect of the COVID-19, which controlled by the Chinese government in, in China. I don't know about, uh, about the other countries and about other world, how they are managing these things, but in China, and they have, they apply the strict policy on, on, on that kind of persons who are spreading the fake news because uh, it, it caused the panic. It, it caused the panic into the public. And even they didn't allow to the media person to spread any kind of uh, any kind of covid news which is not approved by the who and approved by the chinese government and the doc doctors uh, officially and they just uh, took two serious actions and um, even there some they, they just put some uh, uh, kind of punishments to the reporters who report some kind of uh, people uh, stories who are, have some kind of asthmatic behaviors and how they are spreading from the air, like blah, blah. These kind of things, they just controlled uh, from the strict policy and the rules and regulation. And uh, uh, next is how the China used the technology to, to control the COVID and how they, they just track the people because it's another aspect is uh, very important, like how they can manage the, even the people one if if i have the coronavirus i am the asthmatic person and i am moving from one place to another place then how they can track the which places i visited and how many persons i met with them so they make it and uh, the the uh, one uh, app is i am showing like the left side of the is for university like everyone, even the professors, staff members and students, if they want to enter into the university, they have to scan that Q, uh, QR code and it showed your health, uh, health uh, condition and uh, it's also showed your location where you are living uh, currently and uh, where, where, where you enter into the different uh, supermarkets and the other places. Okay, the government also took an other thing like uh, how the government uh, maintained the safety of the all resident, which I already explained in like they uh, apply is uh, protocol five, which is applying to the war situation. China said like it's a war against uh, COVID-19 and uh, the, uh, the communist party take control on all of the national assets and they uh, like uh, execute the all, all the protocol five uh, 
to for for the people even they it, when they are because it's so hard for the uh, for chinese government to implement into the china and even the, like you are not uh, giving the proper information that time the covid 19 also do not have the proper information like how it's spreading from person to person what about the animals how they are like the people are getting from the pet animals it's very hard to apply the, these things that's why the china started to put the war situation in china and they said like it's it's over social responsibility to cope with it cope with this problem and we have to look after this one so my next one is what measures like the what are the suggestions for the other countries which i observed like chinese took into the china and the, what, uh, which things they are like the which suggestions is it the first one, the assertive action, they took strong and the bold action against uh, every like uh, panic buying situation and the for any situation like they have to handle. They apply the policy and rules and regulation on every person, on every society, uh, even if they are working like they are foreigners, no one is above the law. All are in the in the in that actions. They have to uh, like uh, follow these rules and regulation. Even no one can escape from that one place to another one if it's in a law down situation the second one is the border management they also right now that there is no case in in my city and my province even there are so many provinces they do not have any cases uh, except the wuhan then how they manage they manage like they close the border from outside of the world inside of the china is now everything is on normal like we can think like differently from taking the uh, taking which measures the chinese took uh, to manage the things from outside of the country because there are so many uh, imported cases which can came from the other countries to your country then you also have to look after about these cases some businessmen and some students who are already studying and who was already doing the business in some other countries like uk and the 12 countries there the cases are so high so you have to make the mechanism how you can control these cases the third one is the e economy management China didn't, yeah, China did the lockdown on, on a root level, but they didn't close the food market because it's very necessarily to, to maintain it. And they just also, another, another, other companies like uh, surgical and medical companies that didn't close it. And from the till from start of the COVID-19 to till now, they didn't close because that is the main streamline which the country can face the problem. And from maybe they have to import from the other countries, that thing. that's why they didn't uh, close it. They took the precautions for the people and uh, for the employees who were working in that companies, but they didn't close. That is the economy management, how the, like you cannot uh, paralyze all the economy system. Then you have to think which, which organizations and which companies still have to work on it and still continue in a COVID-19 situation as well. They also did one more important part is the engaging the scientists. They, they, they just uh, activate all the professors, all the scientists, which is related to the medical science and the uh, biological science. They just uh, uh, contacted with them and they said like, you have to continue to research on it, how we can cope up with this problem. That's why the China also make it the vaccine on, on regarding this uh, COVID-19. It's also the human trial on maybe on second one, like the first one is uh, Australia or maybe Germany make it. And the, now the China is already make it the vaccine, but it's not for the, you know, it's, it's right now it's on a human trial. Uh, the, it's not like uh, uh, available for the everyone. It's because if the testing procedure, like it took maybe six months and more than one year, like that one, it's already they make it because of engaging the high profile intellectual peoples like uh, scientists and other ones. The, my last one is the statistics of the Hafei. My last slide is, and uh, like they make it, uh, first of all, I divided it, this part into the three, three portions. The first one is the, uh, the uh, medical situation in, in China, in Hafei, specifically in Hafei. So what was the uh, Hafei and the China have the medical situation? China has 33,000 hospital. It's a big amount of the hospital. It's not like a small one. If I will compare with my country and maybe the other countries, the countries do not have that kind of uh, uh, like the medical facilities and hospitals to cope up with any epidemic disease. The, th the second one is the, like they also have the 12.3 million medical personnel, active medical personnel, like uh, including the doctors and the others staff, uh, which uh, directly related to the medical field. And the third part is the death rate. 
uh, the second the second section of death rate how like the death rate is uh, in Hubei and the other uh, in other places of the China. Okay, the patient who has some kind of diseases like diabetes, some other kind of diseases in China, the death rate of these persons are high. And as compared to the young people and those people who do not have any kind of disease. So the second part is what lesson we are learning from, like if the someone has some kind of disease, so we have to track that kind of persons and the, they, that kind of person have to took more action to save uh, to keep safe from the COVID-19 because COVID-19 accelerate the other diseases. People actually are not dying because of the COVID-19, it's also dying because of the other diseases because they accelerate the other disease like diabetes, like other problems they have, the kidney failures, the other organ failures because of this problem. And the, all, the complete China have 5.53 uh, fertility, mortality rate. So only the in Hubei province is the 2.9%. This means that the half of the amount of the mortalities are in Hubei province, which is the epidemic like Wuhan, which is the epidemic of the China. And the another aspect is uh, uh, which I highlighted in my third section is uh, five times like uh, this COVID-19 in China is five that higher than the SARS family. It's more dangerous than uh, in China. It's, it's more impact, the more impact on economy and the other things five times higher than the SARS. And they also affected uh, GDP. And Chinese GDP is in just two months has dropped like 2.4%. It is the like big amount for that kind of countries who's developing very fast in the world. And the the one uh, factor is also I am going to highlight, it is the mortality rate between the gender, like the male and the female in China. The, only the 1.7% are female who got infected and uh, died because of the COVID-19. The male ratio is 2.8%. This means that male are higher than female. It could be the funniest thing in China. Maybe it's like highlighting the uh, females are maybe the more stronger than male. Uh, like some kind of facts, some researcher when do that kind of things and uh, conducting in China, like they be, when they see that kind of factor, maybe in the world as also, maybe, and uh, it's not a uh, right now uh, truth, but it's a statical fact, like girls are more uh, stronger against, to fight against the COVID-19 as compared to the male, even the, uh, in China it's an equal system. It's not like that male are doing and going outside for doing a business and job and other things. Female are not doing. Female equally doing the same things like male are doing in China. It's an equal system. Uh, so uh, that is my all about the Hafei uh, and uh, in China, what is the situation of the COVID-19. I have already given my suggestions. Uh, thank you so much for giving me the time again. And uh, first of all, uh, again, I want to say to thank you to the, all of the members uh, and my co-workers uh, and the co-speakers who are already presenting the uh, knowledge about the COVID-19, which, which could be the important uh, for everyone vital, uh, for the everyone who's listening that, uh, con uh, that uh, workshop, which is held by the IPA. And uh, I, I, I am really thankful to you, all of these members. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ali, for your amazing presentation. A little bit from Ali presentation that uh, heavy local governments working uh, together with central government for taking down COVID-19 pandemic. As, as a result, now the situation are under control and also citizens of heavy were obeyed the government instruction to stay at home and get Medicare for people who were suspect of COVID-19 disease. So I think, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the fourth percent uh, uh, so this time we go to uh, question and answer uh, session. Um, you can raise your hand if you have uh, any question for the fourth uh, presenter. Host, can you help me to uh, to find uh, who want to ask the question? Oke, okay. yang pertama dari Mas Heri Setiawan Purnawali, dipersilakan. Oke, okay. thanks for the time. I got um, two questions for Mr. Dimas and one for Mr. Ali. Uh, for Mr. Dimas, 
quite interesting findings that you already presented. Uh, that is uh, Westminster highest density, but lower positive numbers in patients of COVID-19 than Liverpool, for example. Uh, in fact, that several um, people or we as the planner believe that urban density is uh, above all and a main vulnerability factor that we should um, consider for uh, the next urban planning. So what do you, uh, f uh, what do you think about the, the finding that Westminster is higher than Liverpool? That's the first question. And the second number is... Um, sorry, we just uh, only have uh, one question for one person. Okay. Okay, so, so you just only have one person to one question, okay? Okay, okay the, the, so that question, um, then um, so for future urban planning consideration for that findings for Mr. Dimas, okay. And then the okay. other one is for Mr. Ali. Quite interesting that it is you decided not to get back to your home country and then um, choosing um, staying at nearby Wuhan. So um, any future movements shown from the government of China to make such future preparation of the pandemic mitigation and uh, that you found uh, that is quite interesting for us to as the consideration for us for the um, to be shared to you. Okay, that's all I think. Thank you, uh, Harry. Um, uh, to make it clear, uh, you have just only one question for one person. So okay. uh, because of you have a, a little half a time, you have a, so that um, uh, maybe we can talk to Dimas. Uh, will you uh, answer uh, guess, uh, Harry question, please? Dimas? Dimas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, Fahari, thank you for the, uh, the question. So uh, what, what I presented was Westminster, um, despite being one of the most densely populated cities across the United Kingdom, uh, has an unexpectedly low cases. So it's like 500, 535, uh, if I was not mistaken, uh, compared to Birmingham with, with four cases, uh, regardless the, the, the density is significantly much lower than Westminster. So uh, this, uh, I, I, I was trying to stress out about uh, the assumption on uh, commuting as a more determining factor than uh, density itself. So, so of course, th this needs a further investigation, but uh, just a, a pre uh, preliminary study, uh, there had been some analysis suggesting that uh, density, although it might contribute in some ways to the transmission of the disease, but in overall, it might be the commuting that contributes more uh, to the, uh, uh, the transmission of the disease. So that was, I was, that was our, uh, the, the point I was trying to suggest. All right. Um, do you have any? Uh, uh, I mean, um, uh, government's uh, uh, instruction about um, uh, uh, COVID nineteen pandemics. Uh, how uh, the citizen follows the instruction and something like that. Maybe Harry Setiawan said that um, uh, it is uh, in a hard condition to uh, Manchester uh, government to tackle down the uh, pandemic. So it is uh, any uh, special uh, instruction to make a citizen of Manchester uh, follow us? To so make yeah, so, so, um, so the, 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 the uh, dilemma in here is in applying the, the measures and the policy for lockdown and so on. It's, so, so I can give you some idea. So the policy, is that you are not allowed to go out unless it's some uh, for something that it's really really essential. But um, so the base is like okay, you can do grocery shopping, but only once a week. Uh, the question is how how do we measure? It? How do we make sure somebody complies with the rules going out only once a week, while there are no checkpoints 
uh, anywhere out there. Uh, the council has been um, stating that they will restrict the social distancing. There will be officers, there will be police uh, um, patrolling the cities to make sure that uh, the citizens yeah. comply with the regulations. But the, uh, for, for, for a couple of times, I went out for grocery shopping and I did not see any checkpoints nor um, offices uh, making sure uh, the law are enforced. So it's quite difficult. Also, like um, in the Manchester airport itself, so there are friends who came out from abroad um, saying that uh, even until uh, late March, there had been uh, very less uh, restriction. I mean, there's no checkpoint, there's no temperature checks like, like, like uh, happening uh, in some airports around the world, but not in Manchester. So, so it's, 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 it's mostly a very late uh, and a very loose uh, uh, application of the uh, lockdown aspects of the uh, right. disease containment. All right, thank you. Um, so uh, we can move to next question. Uh, Mr. Uh, Janki. Janki, please. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Baik, terima kasih atas kesempatan yang telah diberikan. Saya ingin bertanya kepada narasumber yang telah menyajikan materi barusan yang sangat menarik. Ingin bertanya terkait bagaimana kondisi kota-kota yang Anda jelaskan tadi terkait kebijakan pemerintah yang diambil, itu apakah ada konflik dengan mungkin akademisi atau kebijakan dengan pemerintah lain terus atau dari masing-masing pemerintah itu sendiri. Nah, itu contohnya apa terus penanganan mereka bagaimana? Baik, terima kasih. Thank you, Ahmad Changki. Yeah. Please. Uh, so, um, uh, Janki just say in Indonesian, so I have to uh, um, translate to uh, English language. Um, Janki said that um, how to uh, um, to taking down the uh, COVID-19 virus in, in your country, especially in India, uh, uh, Riyadh, Hefe, and, and Manchester. Uh, because of uh, a lot of uh, uh, government have a difference, uh, uh, difference uh, idea to to taking down the COVID-19 pandemic. So maybe we can start from Ali. Okay. Ali. Uh, thank you so much for asking the question. Actually, in my country, uh, if I will talk about Pakistan, is not uh, developed like uh, China, and uh, it's also the we have some kind of financial problems last from uh, five years and we are taking the loan from the other country. So it is a problem for us to tackle that kind of disease because uh, uh, like more than 50% population are below the poverty line. And uh, in that kind of uh, situation, if you are apply the highest uh, high stri restrictions like lockdown on, on, a, uh, on a general population and you also have to say like you have to close down the businesses and the organization companies, and what about the people who are working on a daily wages? It's, a, it's some kind of the big disaster for them. And maybe they will die because of the poverty, not because of the COVID-19. So uh, in that kind of situations, uh, uh, at that time, the government are... Looks like we have a network problem again. Ali, are you still there? Ali? Ali, are you still there? Okay, we just next to the um, Niza or Isani, Isani first. Isani? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, um, 
pardon i lost few connections so can you just repeat the question to me um uh different uh, country have a different uh, uh, policy to tackle down to tackle down the uh, covid uh, 19 pandemic so what do you, what it's uh, uh, your uh, your local government's policy uh, to uh, to uh, uh, what is it to limit the spreading of uh, uh, covid 19 in your uh, country okay. based on your government's policy e- Yes, yes, yes. So, ah, uh, definitely. Like in India, specifically in my city, so government is mainly dealing with the lockdown. Like we have lockdown in two phases, and it's the nationwide lockdown. And in India, it's a federation country. So this and the health comes in the concurrent list, which involves both state and the center. So they are working together. The central government has spent around. The, I can I could see one more question in the chat that how much the Indian government had spent on COVID nineteen. So it's around fifteen thousand crores that they are spending right now. And uh, yes, um, yesterday in fact there was one uh, institute from Pune, which is a state, which is a city in Maharashtra. It is one of the states in India. Like they came up with the vaccination of COVID nineteen, which will be out from next month. so we don't have the medicine right now but then we have the government are focusing on the research institutes so that we come up with some good results and yeah so we are not doing state wise specifically otherwise yeah i hope i answer the question yes. otherwise you can yes. uh, uh, yeah, you know reverse yes. that yes um we we move to uh, niza niza what do you think about the question i mean uh, different country have a different policy to taking down the covid 19 pandemic yes uh, thank you yes yes, uh, yes the first is uh, the covid 19 is not only about uh, health uh, prevention uh, but it's uh, we're talking about economic we're talking about the people talking about uh, distribution production of uh, of food and other things and uh, in the south the Uh, the the advantage is uh, Saudi using monarchy or kingdom. Okay. So once they uh, implement the policy, then it will be obeyed by the citizen or resident here. The, the interesting thing is uh, they implement uh, uh, I think uh, uh, three time of lockdown. The first time is the partial lockdown. The second is total lockdown. Then next, now in Ramadan they implement partial lockdown except Makkah. So, uh, what is partial lockdown? Open mall, the open market, they can go anywhere now. So, uh, uh, they relax lockdown policy. So people can go work in the market mall just for some time until 20 of May. Then the government will review if the the statistic of the COVID is uh, decreasing or flattened. Then it could be they will uh, remove the lockdown. If not, they will, they will apply the total lockdown again. So it can be the 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 model is can be the partial then the uh, total then again partial then again total. So the people can be relaxed uh, during this uh, uh, policy. Okay. Um, we move to Manchester. What do you think, Dimas? Um, yeah. So, uh, what, what I get from the question was: Are there any conflicts of the policy being implemented with with, yes. with, with, the, with the people or, or other, uh, policies from other sectors? Yes. So, uh, there are at least two main um, points. So, it's the health uh, policy system. That's why the the tagline "Stay home, stay home." Uh, Protect the NHS and save lives. So, the protect the NHS uh, point stresses that uh, although UK claim they have one of the best health healthcare system uh, in the world, but there goes the pandemic, uh, destroying the system itself. So, yeah, there's been overwhelming situation. Uh, the system cannot cope uh, with, with 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 the rising number of of positive cases. And of course, in terms of economy, business, uh, well, as we know, uh, the UK have officially 
um, exit from the European Union. So the Brexit on itself is a challenge for the UK to ensure the sustainability of the economy. And now have been um, disturbed by these pandemics. So yes, it's, it, this is the, one of the reason, the consideration why the lockdown measures was put a bit too late. So it's more of considering where the economy has to be somewhere first uh, uh, before the health uh, uh, issue itself. So, uh, so yes, it, it's been a stressful first or two weeks uh, for those uh, criticizing that government are to uh, carelessly, uh, selfishly uh, have uh, put the economic agenda uh, forward uh, uh, than the health uh, consideration. So these kind of conflicting uh, issues that, that I can say. Thank you. Thank you, Dimas. Um, we have uh, 241 particip participation uh, today in uh, this uh, web seminars. Um, I'm so sorry to not to uh, accommodate uh, all of your co uh, question to this uh, uh, to this uh, pace, but we can move to the uh, second pace that um, we can accommodate from the YouTube uh, question. Uh, first of all, uh, is uh, from Ibnu Sasonko to Isani. Uh, yeah. how, how about the um, uh, how about the employment social impact in India? Are there uh, unemployment workers cause, uh, cause of uh, industry should be stopped, for example? And how long uh, affect uh, for their food and other daily needs? Yeah, so it has you know affected a lot economically, mainly to the day-to-day -day workers because the city I live in, there are way, a lot of migrants who in fact have gone to other states also so the government is doing you know they have installed few centers where they can help the workers and uh, they have identified those who are in need they have they are taking care of the food and in fact you know sending thousand rupees thousand as per indian currency to everyone's account and th those who don't have account they are trying to you know go to manage it with something else so it's a then you there you can see the conflicts between between the technology and other stuff so basically yeah so it has affected a lot okay then. um we move to the second uh question from youtube uh to uh, nizar dimas and ali um how effective uh uh how effective the lockdown? Because, uh, for instance, in Riyadh, uh, there is a lot of people for one uh, for one house. So uh, it, it, it consists of uh, father, mother, their children, and also for their grandfather and something like that. It is effective for the lockdowns. These are. Uh, yes. Uh, uh... As we know the COVID statistic is increasing on, on March and uh, they know the trend of the, uh, the, the patient. As you know, the uh, around 80% of the patient are coming from the water, okay? So lockdown is effective, uh, implemented in the, of Saudi people and they know the the capacity of the hospital, they know the capacity of the hospital in Saudi, so they can they can uh, doing a preventive measure for the for the, the policy. But now they are doing strict policy for the the worker uh, or uh, or slum area, so they are relaxed in the Saudi district, which is uh, uh, for a Saudi citizen. But they are still doing strict policy lockdown in the worker uh, rural area because the eighty percent of the patient uh, are the worker. So it uh, for effective. Oh, okay. Uh, we move to Dimas. Uh, what do you think about it, Dimas? Uh, about the uh, uh, lockdown, a totally lockdown in Manchester. Is that a, a great yeah. uh, policy for people? 
so yeah, so uh, I restate again. So there is no strict lockdown in across okay. the United Kingdom. So okay, although they use the word lockdown, but what is actually uh, uh, so so we we can still travel uh, between cities. Yes, restaurant has been shut down, but supermarkets, uh, and other essential public services are still uh, remains open. So. Um, so these measures, of course, the lockdown itself is not effective because we can see the, the, the number of daily cases increase still exceeds 4,000 per day in in UK. So, yes, it's not effective yet. It's not effective. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Ali, we can move to Ali. What do you say, Ali? Ali? Is there any... Uh, uh, is 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 uh, lockdown is effective in 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 Hefei, Wuhan? Ali, Mike, Mike. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In China, in, in the case of China, the lockdown is um, so effective, and uh, it's because uh, they they not just control the epidemic center; they also uh, uh, control the coronavirus and the COVID-19 in other provinces and cities, which I have already given the example of my city. We just have 174 cases and the one death, even we are adjacent to the Wuhan. It's so near, like it's a two, hour, two hour drive from my city to the Wuhan. And uh, uh, how effective this uh, lockdown is for specifically if you are apply with the proper rules and regulation and strictly implemented to the every general population. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Um, for the next question from YouTube, uh, last but not least, uh, from Ika, uh, uh, for all of you, uh, as its location, uh, Hefei location is near Wuhan, the direct threat yeah. is low, very low in Wuhan. But um, however, COVID-19 virus were spreading dramatically uh, in, into your country, uh, where you are living. So uh, uh, maybe especially for Ali, what makes the death rate uh, is low in Wuhan, uh, in Hefei, especially? Uh, actually, it's a big difference uh, between my country to the China. And uh, first of all, we have to think about the resources the one country have. Pakistan, if we will compare, if I will compare like Pakistan with China, we have very less resources as compared to the China. I have already told like Chinese has 33,000 uh, hospitals and uh, 12.3 million uh, medical personnel, the active medical personnel, but in Pakistan situation is too, too different. And uh, like the situation is worse than uh, like other countries. We are not uh, a fastly developing country. We are struggling regarding the resources and uh, like loan issues, we are taking the loans from the other countries and uh, for econ economic condition is also not good. For that, that time, if you face uh, this kind of disease like COVID-19, which is already is the epidemic, and uh, now the, it's spreading from person to person, you have to shut your organization and uh, the other company. This means that you are going to be bankrupt. Its situation has become more worse in your country. So you also have to take care about those people who are below the poverty line and the working on and uh, um, daily wages. If you uh, stop the organization and the small businesses, then how about the, those people who are working on a daily wages? They, they will die because of the poverty, not because of the coronavirus. So we have to think about these things as th these measures as well. And in China, the people are so rich as compared, even there are the just 5% uh, population are below the poverty line, 95% above the poverty line. They can, they can meet uh, uh, like the daily wages uh, uh, resources, like uh, financial costs, they can meet them easily. But in Pakistan situation is not like that. That's why the cases in uh, Pakistan increasing because the lockdown is not too strict and they apply on a flexible conditions. And even the government is also providing the 12,000 to the poor family. 12,000 park rupees is a, it's, it's a good money to the every house providing. Even that we do not have much resources. So we also utilizing the technology and uh, other resources which we can. Even we do not have the proper hospital, too, much, too many hospitals and the doctors to cope up with these disease. So government, what they did for uh, to coping with this problem, they make it the like e-hospital. E-hospital means that the new idea 
And uh, what they did, they make it one app and uh, uh, like the one person have some kind of symptom which is related to the COVID-19, they put into the, that app and uh, then the doctor are looking towards it. And they also, they can call on a one uh, tool free uh, number, they can call and they can share the symptoms and doctor can like uh, ask you about the COVID-19 symptoms and other uh, problems which you are facing currently. And then doctor suggest you to visit the nearest hospital. Do, do not uh, create the rush to the hospitals because if every person have some kind of normal flu and the other things and they go to the hospital for the testing to the COVID-19 and it will become the uh, big rush and big mess for the government and the general people as well. And it's a, the hospital is also the one of the famous place after the hospital to spreading the COVID-19 because maybe there is a, some asthmatic cases that was also there if the one person who just have the flu and went to the hospital to for uh, to check the COVID-19 which maybe is not he has. So uh, it is the, it's some kind of the different situation in country to country. I think uh, you have already got the answer of these yeah. questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, how about uh, Nizak, what do you think about it? Nizar? Uh, yes, sorry. Yeah, what do you think uh, about um, uh, the policy of a government to uh, uh, to handling down spreading dramatically in uh, the COVID virus in Riyadh? I mean, the policy, uh, the 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 strategy of our governments uh, to uh, taking down the COVID nineteen. Because um, in, yes. in, in your yes. presentation, uh, King Salman said that uh, uh, people are free to uh, uh, get the Medica uh, Medicare or healthcare, uh, and 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 uh, um, what is it? Um, some uh, uh, destination to Mekah and and Medina stop to for Umrah and Hajj and something like that. Yes, uh, actually, they are now which one the the uh, which one the cause uh, the the in COVID uh, patient in the then uh, sorry sorry I cannot get you. Um, Reza? the 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 government policy how uh, besides I'm um, giving uh, free. Uh, uh, Medicare to to uh, okay, people okay, okay. yet, yes. Yes. Is there any strategy? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they know the the capacity of the medic. They know the capacity of the hospital in the Saudi, and you know that case is only one percent in Saudi, and oh, okay. for case uh, I think uh, ten. So that's why they are confident with the policy. They are confident uh, now in the they they uh, remove the total because you know some people need to work, some people to get money. Uh, that's why they they are very confident with this. They know the the the, the most the most case in the water area. Uh, then there is another district law than uh, except Maka. Okay. So the, the main thing is they know the, the capacity, the availability. Okay. How about Isani? Last but not least, the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can you please repeat the question? I'm partnering um, for it. Um, as you know that um, uh, people uh, in um, each country have a difference uh, how to uh, taking down the the COVID nineteen pandemic. Is there any um, uh, strategy from the government to uh, uh, handling uh, this situation in India? Uh, situation as in social, there you know, government is trying to uh, uh, you know handle it in a various ways, like on social basis, cultural basis, like for example, cultural. As in, they are requesting the religious heads to appeal to people that uh, do not go out and maintain the distance. So, because India, in India, you will find a lot, a lot of religions, and the diversity is so huge that they 
you know a very you will find a very, very religious people so that is one strategy the government has come up with that they are requesting religious sites to request them for it and apart from that economically uh, they are trying their best and till now the situation is kind of control except few red zones like i have spoken about zones so few apart from few zones like but then we have few uh, green zones also so till now the government is um, kind of ready to handle the situations and i also said that they came up with a vaccination of covid-19 and they are using technology to handle it because it's a world in the world of a globalization liberalization we can't get away with the technology so they i have come up with the apps that uh, they were like uh, like i told you arogya setu arogya setu means health bridge the in the english that arogya setu is a hindi word so it means so through those apps and from doing door to door surveys like the, yeah so all right from top to bottom is the policy they are trying to follow thank you all right then um because of our uh, limited time for to us to uh, accommodate your question to the speaker so i have to finish uh, uh overall uh, all of the presentation presenter uh, said that there is a large number of the impact on economy social uh, technology transportation healthcare and etc so i think uh, uh, we have uh, around the world working together uh, uh, to um, to make the uh, the spread of uh, covid 19s stop so uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for the uh, four presenters ali isani nizar dimas for your uh, time to uh, join with us for our web, web seminar in uh, uh, in in one and two pace for your answering question thank you very much guys thank you very much for your join to us uh, uh, this is a great time to spend with you to spread sharing experience and sharing uh, knowledge about how covid 19s uh, spread and how to uh, fight together uh, to who uh, are taking down the covid pandemics nine thank you very much uh, and then i have to uh, give the time to host please okay thank you everybody yeah thank you everybody um alhamdulillah i want to say thank you very much for your the speakers and in this time i want to thank you uh, say to you and we hope you can join in another webinars in iap jawa timur is java thank you ali thank you thank you ifhani dimas and niza thank you thank you guys thank you. and i want Bet. to say um to the participant terima kasih bapak ibu sekalian sudah bergabung bersama kami uh, mohon uh, untuk menyalakan videonya masing-masing I want to capture and and uh, open your video and uh, host. Gimana sudah siap? Oke, okay, siap. Ada ada 13 lembar uh, 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 capture. Ada 10, ada 10. Ada 10. Oke. Okay. 1 3 2 1. Sudah? Oke. Okay. Okay. Uh, lagi lagi, satu lagi. 3 2 1. Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. Uh, second 3 2 1 1. Oke. Oke. yang ketiga 3 2 1. Oke. Oke. I have a uh, certain capture. Uh, yang keempat 3 2 1. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay. yang kelima 3 2 1. Sebentar, sebentar. Oke, okay, ulangi. 3 2 1. Oke. Okay. Yang keenam, 3 2 1. Oke. Okay. Yang ketujuh, 3 2 1. Oke. Okay. Yang ke-8, 3 2 1. Oke. Okay. Yang ke-9, 3 2 1. Oke. Okay. Yang ke-10, 3 2 1. Oke. Okay.
Oke, okay, terima kasih Bapak Ibu sekalian. Sampai jumpa di webinar berikutnya yang ketiga dari trilogi webinar yang diselenggarakan oleh IAP Jawa Timur. Uh, terima kasih, selamat berbuka puasa. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum Terima kasih yang tiga tim keren. Terima kasih. Terima Thank <laughs> you.